Welcome and Happy New Year. Uh, tonight, um, 645, uh, public hearing. Uh, the public hearing ground rules, first of all, roll call, please. Sheila. Deputy Mayor Sakala. Here. Mayor Cassati. Here. Councilor Despard. Here. Councilor Finger. Here. Councilor Hopkins. Here. Councilor Ludwig. Here. Councilor Mangini. Here. Councilor Nelson. Here. Councilor Pisner. Here. Councilor Santanella. Here. Councilor Ungeyer. Here. 11 members are present, none are absent. The following notice of public hearing was published in the Hartford Current on Tuesday, December 27, 2022. Town of Enfield Legal Notice. The Enfield Town Council will hold a public hearing in the Enfield Town Hall Council Chambers, 820 Enfield Street, Enfield, Connecticut, on Monday, January 9th, 2023, at 6.45 p.m. to allow interested residents an opportunity to express their opinions regarding the proposed ordinance establishing the number of justices of the peace at 75. More information regarding the proposed changes can be viewed at www.enfieldconnecticut.gov. Dated this 23rd day of December 2022, Sheila M. Bailey, Town Clerk. The ground rules for the public hearing. There is no time limit, but I ask each person not to take up too much time so that everyone will have an opportunity to speak. <coughs> After each person who desires has had one chance to speak, I shall permit those individuals who desire a second chance. After those individuals who desire to speak a second time, I shall permit those individuals a desire a third, fourth, etc. And please refrain from personalities. Is there anyone in the audience uh, willing to come up and speak at the public hearing? Walter Cruzel, 21 Charlie Road. I am against this uh, public hearing. Um, I'm not a JP. I don't plan on being a JP, but you shouldn't limit who wants to be one. And just because another town is doing it, I don't know why we have to do it. So if another town jumps off a bridge, are we supposed to jump too? I mean, it just doesn't make any sense to me. I mean, we can limit it, but you should be able to go through the rolls and see who's not, who's not, um, doing their service and all that, but still it's, I don't think we should be limiting it to 75 just because that's the way that the other towns are doing it. That's, that's not an excuse for me. So I'm against it. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else that would like to come forward? Is there anybody else that would like to come forward in regard to the public hearing? Was your hand up for the public hearing? Or are you just saying? Hi. Okay. All right. Hi. All right. Well, um, motion to close the public hearing. Motion. Uh, 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 a motion was made by Councillor Nelson and seconded by Councillor Santanella. The any discussion before we close out the public hearing tonight? Okay. Public hearing is closed. Thank you. Meeting will start at 7 p.m. Thank you.
I'd like to welcome everybody. First of all, Happy New Year. Uh, I'd, like to I'd like to welcome everybody to the Enfield Town Council regular meeting, Monday, January 9th, 7 p.m. at the Council Chambers. Uh, prayer, Councillor Hopkins. I uh, heard a poem recently that I thought I would share. I think it's really appropriate as we move away from this holiday season. Uh, it's by Howard Thurman. Uh, whose radical theory of radical nonviolence informed the thinking of Reverend Martin Luther King, among others, uh, you know, helped him, I think, find hope in the spite of overwhelming odds. The poem's called The Work of Christmas. When the song of the angels is still, when the star in the sky is gone, when the kings and princes are home, when the shepherds are back with their flock, the work of Christmas begins. To find the lost, to heal the broken, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoner, to rebuild the nations, to bring peace among brothers, and to make music in the heart. Please take these words to heart, especially when it comes to assisting those uh, who have the least in our town and our society as we move, move further into this new year of 2023. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Uh, uh, <clears throat> Sheila, uh, roll call, please. Councillor Hopkins? Here. Councillor Ludwig? Here. Councillor Mangini? Here. Councillor Nelson? Here. Councillor Pisner? Here. Councillor Santanella? Here. Councillor Ungeyer? Here. Deputy Mayor Sakala? Here. Mayor Crisati? Here. Councillor Despard? Here. Councillor Finger? Here. 11 members present, none are absent. Fire evacuation announcement. In the event of a fire, there are exits in the back of the chambers and to my left in the audience's right. As exit through the doors and go down the stairs and into the respective parking lots. Item five, minutes of proceeding minutes. Tonight we have two sets of minutes to approve for tonight. May I have a motion to approve the minutes from the special meeting of December 19th? Motion. Second. Uh, Councilor. Pisner and a second by Councillor Mangini. Is there any discussion? All in favor, raise your hand. Opposed and abstentions. We have 10 in favor, one abstention. And now the minutes for the regular meeting of December 19th. Is there a, so a motion? And, uh, second. Councillor Mangini and a second by Councillor Nelson. Any discussion? All in favor, please raise your hand. Unanimous, 11-0. Item number six, special guests. We have several special guests tonight to introduce an exciting proposal for the now vacant Mass Mutual Office Park. Councillor Nelson is gonna be part of the presentation and as the group comes forward to introduce themselves, uh, Andy Borgia, Sean Anderson, and Anthony Artelino. I'm gonna ask our town manager uh, to give a brief overview. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Mayor and members of the town council. Uh, tonight is the culmination of some internal staff discussions that have been going on for a couple of weeks since Mr. Borgia came to the town with a proposal. Tonight, we are only here to discuss a Section-824 referral. But however, this project has far-ranging implications, and in the interest of everyone being on the same page, I think that it is important that we see the scope of what is being proposed as you consider sending it to the next step, which in the course of this project would be the very first step of deciding whether this is going to be appropriate for Enfield. Um, this proposal involves the Mass Mutual site at the top of Enfield Street. Uh, we do have a representative from Mass Mutual here tonight, Sean Anderson, who is part of the team that will be presenting. But what I want to concentrate on is just a little bit of an overarching theme about what this looks like. Uh, right now, we have an office park, 65 acres, which Mass Mutual has been uh, benevolent caretakers of until recently when Empower ended their lease, so now it's vacant. So what does that mean for Enfield? 
in order to talk about what it means for Enfield, we have to go back to the beginning and talk about the fact that Mass Mutual was in our top 10 taxpayer list for years, currently, um, as of the last grand list, at number four. So clearly, that's going to change, as will the million dollar payment. Uh, that we've enjoyed for many years. But more importantly, we have to talk about the intersection of office parks and COVID and the fact that we as a country have now reinvented <laughs> ourselves in terms of uh, the pandemic response and the fact that people worked remotely. However, now that the pandemic has abated to a certain degree and things are getting back to normal, you would think that that had changed. But in case it's not, um, I looked at some recent census data and they are now reporting that 29% of Americans were working at home during the month of October 2022. So what does that mean for Enfield? What it means for Enfield is not only are we having a shrinking uh, interest in commercial real estate, which affects us from a municipal tax revenue standpoint, but it also has some ancillary effects in terms of the benefits that our local businesses and the local foot traffic bring in terms of sales tax receipts. So you're filling up your gas tank, you're going out for lunch, you're meeting friends for happy hour, you're running errands on your lunch hour. All of that has now dissipated out of the fact that we have this shrinking real estate. Class A market space for real estate is really not something that is high uh, on anybody's list right now. A couple of other interesting facts. Another survey that I read over the weekend analyzed mobile phone data and you know the whole pinging aspect, they know where people are, and it shows that foot traffic in central business districts is down substantially from 2019. And then another recent paper showed that it is estimating that 30% of all full-time workdays will be remote by the end of last year. So you, as policymakers, are now charged with deciding what is the fate and what is the role of local government in terms of deciding what we're going to do with that parcel. Enter the team that you're going to hear about tonight. Um, it is going to be something to think about in terms of what this means for Enfield. And the first step in this process, because it's critical to this project, is some added acreage that you're going to see portrayed tonight, which is part of Brainerd Park. So in order for the proposal to go forward that you're going to hear about tonight, a Section 8-24 referral to the Planning and Zoning Commission, which is required by state law, needs to happen, which will happen hopefully after you hear this interesting proposal. So I'm going to turn it over to Ken Nelson now so he can introduce the team and talk about some of the aspects that are important for you to know about tonight. Good evening. So I hate to start a meeting off like this, but to avoid any conflict of interest, I do want to read a statement into the record. My name is Ken Nelson, and for this portion of the meeting, I am sitting on the other side of the table to talk about the potentials of a very exciting project for Enfield, the repurposing of the Mass Mutual Office Park into a sports and entertainment complex. Before I introduce the men behind the proposal and the representative from Mass Mutual who is joining us tonight, I want to make a public statement. The town of Enfield has an ethics ordinance which requires all public officials and municipal employees to maintain integrity and public confidence in government as required by Section 2-128 of the Enfield Town uh, ethics ordinance, I have made a formal request to be excused from voting on this matter. I will be recusing myself from any votes concerning the town council's potential actions concerning this proposal from Fast Track Realty and All Sports Village in accordance with the requirements of the ethics ordinance section 2-128K. I am making this recusal statement due to my professional capacity within the real estate development field. Therefore, I do have a financial interest as defined under Section 2-121 definitions. This statement is on file with the town manager as part of Section 2-128. The town manager will also forward this statement to the Ethics Commission, and I ask that it be included in the minutes of tonight's meeting. While some people may say this is a conflict of interest for my elected town council role due to my professional role, I strongly believe that this is more of a connection than a conflict because the potential benefits are huge to Enfield if and when this comes to fruition. 
As an elected official, we are all asked to make decisions that would help improve the town. This project will do that. The COVID-19 pandemic offended, uh, offended, affected the demand for real estate assets. Physical distancing has directly changed the office settings with remote work options. These effects of the pandemic had made the demand for many types of space go down, perhaps for the first time in modern history. This has created a crisis for the real estate industry. And here in Enfield, with Empower recently vacating the offices and ending their lease with Mass Mutual, we now have a huge, large, empty office park in our town. An office park that was one of our top 10 taxpayers. So the question becomes, what now? At this time, I want to introduce you to Andy Borgia from Fast Track Realty, Anthony Ardolino from All Sports Village and Sean Anderson from Mass Mutual. Andy has a signed agreement with Mass Mutual for the purchase of the campus, which he's going to describe to you. Before he starts, I do want to mention that Andy has been here before. When the project faced too many hurdles in Windsor Locks, he had hoped to work with Enfield on the mall property. That was not in that in the cards. At that point, he resumed his development project in Windsor Locks, but it was ultimately terminated after a series of delays as this was in the midst of the pandemic. The owner refused to extend the agreement, thus bringing the project to an end. I also want to mention Mass Mutual. They are... They are signing an agreement for way under market value because their philosophy is they want to leave Enfield in a better place. We know that there's a lot of work to be done with staff on environmentals, engineering, use, land use boards, and aspects of this plan. But tonight we are here to talk about the concept and see if the council would be willing to send the concept to PZC with a Section 8-24 referral. Because if this plan is to be fully implemented, some of Brainerd Park property may be needed to be utilized. This would be the first step needed to move this project forward. I am sure there will be many more questions, but this project is not feasible without council support. Thank you. Thank you, Ken. Good evening, you can council. Again, my name is Andy Borgia. I'm the managing member of Fast Track Realty. Andy. Yeah. Managing member of Fast Track Realty and also the developer of All Sports Village. Uh, Anthony Ardolino, he represents All Sports Village, and of course, Sean Anderson from uh, Mass Mutual. I'm here tonight to answer any questions you may have regarding this site. Tell us a little bit about what you're going to so, do. So I will tell you a little about the site. Uh, can we move that? Maybe I could stop point. I could point to that and I'll look at the uh, sure. yeah. the screen there. Oh, it is. How about this? Okay. So, basically, uh, in order for the... Uh, Could you get the mic? Not for sure. us, but yeah. people at home. Sure. Thank you. So, basically, for this business model to work for us, we, we need uh, a minimum of 11 outdoor fields. Uh, Anthony, I think they're going to can emphasize that as well uh, regarding Golf Sports Village. So the Mass Mutual site, I mean, it's an ideal location. Uh, uh, it has all the uh, infrastructure currently on, on the site. It's uh, already uh, been approved for a lot of the uses that we're going to be using. Uh, basically, we need special use permits for, for most of the uh, amenities on site. Uh, one of the things which is ideal, is a, is a parking garage. It's a 1,600 uh, parking garage space, uh, but it's it's already built, so we have to build around it. So it, it's not ideal where we can work with empty land. And we have three buildings here, which we can also retrofit. So one of the buildings is going to become a hotel. Uh, that's building number two. I believe it's this one here. Uh, Put my glasses on. <laughs> yeah, so this is building number two here. This would be the hotel. This is the main entrance coming in. Uh, building number three will be uh, retail. 
sports-related retail, restaurants, fitness center, uh, things of that nature. And building number one will be a family entertainment center. I don't know if anybody's familiar with Apex uh, Entertainment in Marlboro, Mass, or Dave & Buster's type uh, facility. When you have you know, two and a half million kids passing through here annually, you know, it's a great concept there. Then we have our, out, our outdoor fields, which is all those green fields that you see. Uh, there's a dividing line here. I'm trying to find it. Here it is. It's that red line that goes down. That divides Mass Mutual from Brainerd Park. And as you can see, we can only get six fields uh, on the Mass Mutual site. And so we need Brainerd Park to put the additional five or six fields on there in order to uh, complement the business model. And as you see over here to the right is where we're going to uh, revitalize uh, Brainerd Park, putting in new basketball courts, new tennis courts, new pickleball courts, a uh, playground area for children 2 to 5 and 5 to 12. Uh, we're going to uh, replicate the softball field that was currently built not too long ago in Brainerd Park, and also our restrooms uh, in Brainerd Park, a walking area, a trail around the perimeter of the park, and uh, a splash pad as well. And a dog run. And a dog run, run. And, a, and a dog run with, with their own parking. And, and a new parking lot as well. So that is what we're proposing, and that is why we need uh, Brainerd Park to uh, complement the uh, project. There will be restrooms in Brainerd Park, too. That's, restrooms, yes. yes. I did say that. Is there any questions that anybody have for me? Well, maybe before that, um, I don't know if uh, if uh, Anthony, if you have it, would like to chime in on on this. Uh, that would be that would be great. Sure. Sure. The uh, All Sports Village Inc. is a nonprofit formed uh, roughly seven or eight years ago. The uh, mission of the nonprofit is to um, enhance and improve sports and recreation in the area, not just youth, it goes to adult as well. Um, and the nonprofit has been out working for those years, trying on a very small projects, and now on a very big project like this, in an effort to improve sporting sports in um, Western Mass, Northern Connecticut, really the Eastern Seaboard now with this project. Um, we, we were in a great partnership with the town of Windsor Locks and um, in Mr. Borgia, and unfortunately, the landowner wasn't a willing participant. It wasn't a good partner. Um, and now we think we have a great partner in Mass Mutual. And uh, Mr. Borge has got an excellent track record in de designing and building these f facilities and having them be successful. And we're really excited about the opportunities that kids and adults are going to have, whether it's playing sports here, learning sports, or um, working at the facility. There's just a really a lot of opportunities. Uh, in these projects. These are very popular across the country right now. It's sort of a like a new, new industry, and it's growing by leaps and bounds, and it can bring in millions of dollars in tourism into your town in the area, and it's just going to be a win-win-win for, for, you know, all those involved. Uh, we're really excited about this site. Mass Mutual has been great to us, so we're really hoping that we can partner with you and try to bring this to fruition finally. Okay, th thank you. Um, thank you for the, the, the outline of uh, the project. Uh, I think it's an exciting project. I think this is something that uh, will, will benefit Enfield. I think it's going to benefit really the, the state of Connecticut, which in turn is going to be a big plus for, for Enfield and New England and really throughout the, the East Coast. Um, the, the, the idea of the reuse and the repurposing of the Mass Mutual campus and the utilization of the, the buildings into what you had explained, I, I think is really important. The emphasis on 
uh, full-time jobs, emphasis on part-time jobs, construction jobs, you know, all of this is going to go into play. But our purpose here tonight is, after what was outlined, is, we, you know, we need to get the blessing of the P&Z Commission before anything further, since this plan is going to involve the use of park property. So if the town leases any portion of public land, state law requires that P&Z gives this recommendation. So we are going to be looking for uh, a motion here for an 8-24 referral. I'd like I, to make the motion for an 8-24 referral. I, I just want to clarify, it is for a lease only. We are not looking Correct. to purchase the land from the town. And I know I saw some document that said um, transfer, sale, or lease. Strictly Str lease. Strictly lease. And the terms of the lease haven't been discussed yet because we don't know if you're even willing to entertain the idea. Correct. Thank you. Okay. Process. So, uh, okay. So we had the motion by Councilor uh, Pisner. And a second, I think it was originally by Councillor Santanella. Um, is there any uh, discussion on regard to the motion? Councillor Finger. Good evening, guys. Thank you so much. <clears throat> the question I got is we just spent <clears throat> a lot of money on the girls' softball field there, and we have two um, men and adults' softball fields there in, at Brainerd Park. What is the situation with those are we getting rid of them are we moving them are you guys can do something for that i'd like to know what's happening with that because the taxpayers money went in especially went into that girl's softball field as in every weekend our taxpayers money goes into the men's softball field to redo it and line it and everything else and groom it so i'd just like to know what happened with those three sure. thank you so as i stated before we're going to uh replicate the existing girls softball field that was just built at braided park which it shows on the, on the screen there. Yeah, yeah turn around. At Brana Park. Oh, yes. Yeah. Yep. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. And then the, the field's and, being shifted, Doug. Right. We're shifting the field to the right side, more to the east entrance. That is the public park. So that field stays public park. Um, you can say we're replicating the field, but it will be an upgrade because now there will be restroom facilities for uh, boys and girls and stuff. The two fields in the back, there have been discussions um, with um, the town manager and leadership about um, building two new softball fields at the town annex in the back. Um, backstops, redoing, I guess there's an old field. I'm going to be honest, I don't know exactly a lot about the town fields, um, but I believe uh, the mayor and deputy mayor are quite familiar with it. So this is the discussions that we're looking to have with the council. What do you guys want? Where do you want it? I mean, we've put ideas of a park enhancement grant where we'll make a donation to the town of Enfield every year instead of a lease payment. So that money is guaranteed to go to maintain the parks. The, the, this council and previous council has spent a lot of money on recreation in this town. Unfortunately, that's one of the budget lines that get cut when things get tight. So if you were guaranteed this money every year, from Mr. Borgia and his proposal, it could help some of that burden. Um, but again, this is a decision you have to make. What is more important to you? You know, fixing brand new tennis courts at the annex, or do you want the baseball field drainage issue done at Enfield High School? We're open for suggestions. But at this point, there's nothing to discuss if you guys aren't interested in working with us as a partner on Brainerd Park and making this project work because the chances of us doing this on Mass Mutual alone are almost slim to none. All right, uh, thank you so much for that, and I apologize for not realizing that was there, uh, for because I was worried, well, I was along with Councilor Sakala about the girls' softball field. Um, I will be behind this. I think it's a great idea, um, and I wish you the best of luck, and I hope it goes through. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, uh, Councilor, uh, oh, excuse me, Deputy Mayor Sakala. Thank you. Um, I know we're just talking referral here, so I will keep my comments very short. Um, I'm excited about this. I was excited about it two years ago, so I'm more excited that we're back and hopefully we can make this work. Um, and I guess my comment is more 
through the mayor to the town manager and staff if I know we're in the infancy in all of this, but I just want to make sure we have and bring to the table all of the players that are going to be affected by the fields in Brainerd Park. I've said my piece about the girls' softball field. I know we will continue to discuss it. But if we can have buildings and grounds involved, the recreation department, um, I would think that any recreational sports that are involved that are going to be losing or not losing because we will find a place to relocate them, but relocating their sports, I just I want to bring them all to the table and discuss what's possible, where it is possible, and kind of what we can do. Um, because there may be even things that one of us up here or one of you guys don't think about. So um, I would love to see some more fields there, and I hope that we can make this happen. Yeah. So. Okay. Thank you, uh, Councillor Ludwig, then Councillor Mangini. Okay. All right, Councillor. Okay, Councillor Bangini. Just um, dovetailing, uh, Deputy Mayor. Once you do get through the 824, you will be coming back with updates on where we're proceeding, how we're proceeding, and any additional thoughts that you might have. Yes, during the 8-24 process, which I believe is the end of January with planning and zoning. Uh, the town manager and I believe leadership, excluding myself, because I do rep, I'm an owner rep for um, Andy, will be negotiating what your terms are. Now, the ideas, there's a ton of ideas out there. You know, we need to kind of finalize that so next time we come, we have an agreement signed. And obviously, if this doesn't work, the lease is null and void, and it will have all that language in there. Our attorneys, your attorneys will back this up. So if by chance it don't work, which I truly hope it does, nobody's lost anything. If this does work, you have an 80 to $100 million um, retrofit of an office park that the entire country is looking for things to do with these. Mass Mutual doesn't quite fit it but we can work together and make it happen as partners. And that's what we're trying to do. We did also agree to adjust, uh, address Deputy Mayor. We also agreed that if it turns out the two fields that we replace are at the annex, that we would construct those fields before we touch Brainerd Park. Thus, the players that were playing there can now play at the annex with no loss of field time trying to be a good partner. It, it, it's very dynamic, and I definitely do support this. Um, one last note, though, I'd love to see a polo field. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Councilor Lud Ludwig. Thank you very much for the detail. I appreciate this. Just curious, you mentioned your business model. So can you explain your business model, why you need Brainerd Park? For the nonprofit or for? So for whatever, for whatever for your business yeah. model is. For the yeah. nonprofit. So yeah. the nonprofit's technically the borrower. Microphone. Oh, I'm sorry. M microphone, please. The, the nonprofit technically is the borrower, so they're they're the entity that can get the bonds. Um, so um, in dealing with the um, underwriter of the bonds and, and the investor, um, in, in in examining the feasibility studies, eleven fields is the minimum that we need to proceed. Um, they would actually like to see more, but we can't provide more at this point. Maybe some day down the road we could. Um, but 11 fields is a minimum. It's not something we just pulled out of the sky. That, that's, you know, that was what our last effort was, 11 fields. So 11 fields dictates the number of teams that you can bring in. Correct, correct. And there's a whole mathematical formula that the lenders, that, you know, they lend to these types of facilities across the country, and that's what they're looking for. So I'm thinking of the facility down in Bristol where they have four outdoor fields. They have, I think, two indoor fields. When kids played growing up there, it was always busy. I'm sure they made a... So there were six fields. You're so compared, that's why I'm. Well, yeah. today, today's business, like today's business model, where we are, we're on, we're on Wall Street, getting tax exempt bonds. The the numbers that they look at, they want eleven fields because that generates the size of the tournaments, which uh, generates the participants, which makes a mathematical formula. So what, when, when, just so you know, when, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. When, when I first started looking at things of this nature, um, and even before I met Mr. Borgia, you know. We were thinking strictly just basketball and just like 10 courts, but mathematically, you, you won't get anyone to lend on it. You just won't. Well, it's not feasible. There's, yeah, not they, a, they there's get, no profit in it. We have to pay the, 
hundred million back. <laughs> yeah, I, 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 listen, yeah. it's a great project. Yeah. Just want to be upfront. I just wish it didn't include the inclusion of Bernard. Uh, but again, I, I don't want to be the fly in the ointment here. But yeah, it's, that's my only. I, I get the business model, but I know you still can do tournaments. I understand the size. Maybe the tournaments you're looking to bring in are pretty big. You know, for that kind of field, I've been to some of these. I've been to colleges where they have these fields and. Again, so I get it, and, and I, pretty, I completely yeah. understand your business model. Every, yeah. you know, so every every funding source is different. So right. down south, and don't anyone follow the chairs, local communities take out the bonds, and then they hire, and the, and the town goes, or the city goes on the hook for the money. We're not asking you for that. <laughs> uh, we get a lot of blank stares here, but but the, it, it works different everywhere. The northeast is, is a lot more conservative. Right. In, in, um, that's why they came up with the tax exempt vehicle and the nonprofit vehicle to do this. Yeah, appreciate your answer. Yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. Okay, thank you, Councillor Santanella. Thank you. Can you uh, quantify um, number of jobs that this might bring to the community? Can you also quantify sort of the the foot traffic? How many families will be here on a weekend? How often? Uh, how many how many rooms is the hotel that you're proposing? Just to give us some scale of sort of the economic impact of that part of town. Yeah, so uh, it's of course it's seasonal, you know, especially with children. Kids are all from school during the summer, so that's when our, our greatest uh, uh, amount of people will be visiting the facility during the summer when kids are all from school. You're probably looking at two to three hundred teams competing for a four or five day tournament during the summer months. So you're talking about, you know, 3,000 3, participants uh, coming to the event daily. Probably looking about six to 8,000 uh, hotel rooms per night. Six to 8,000? Yeah. Because they, uh, each Nine. participant brings a non-participant family member but it wouldn't be just at this facility i mean because well, we course never not. fit that many hotel rooms the, the hotel proposes only 150 <laughs> rooms so he does he yeah. does have a business plan but the business plan is for windsor locks yeah. and but the demographics are right, still there we're so. willing to adjust it or give it to you as is which covers all of those things um you know the potential of 300 million dollars a year on revenue that comes into the town for doing it it's a destination for the east coast not just new england and you know um yeah so i i believe i, I ellen I, I sent you uh some information on the demographics and and the feasibility studies and what the economic impact it will be to the to the town <laughs> so uh I already gave that information to the town. I'm sure it's available to. We, we we can get that. We can we can get that. We can supply that. And just remember that our task right now is, uh, you know, I'll entertain if anybody else has a, a question. But our, and just you know, we just thing. have to deal with this 824 referral. And all these other questions can be answered as the process goes along. Councillor uh, Hopkins. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I think there's a lot of potential value for Enfield with this um, with this development proposal. I'm really excited to see that. Uh, you know, I'm not wild about the the loss of more than half potential loss of more than half of um, uh, Brainerd Park, but. Uh, I had spoke, I'd reached out to some of my neighbors. I live in District 4, and I live near, fairly near um, this park about what they would like to see. Um, some things that people said to me is that the park is not set up in the most efficient way. I think um, adding some things under this proposal would, would be better use, but I really want to hear from folks in the community, especially those who live and use Brainerd Park. At the end of the day, we don't want to have less recreational opportunities for uh, folks in that area um, than we do at the end, but there's been a lot of really good proposals, I think, for um, supplementing that. Uh, and I think we can probably get to a deal that I would personally support, but I really want to hear from folks out in the community, so please feel free to reach out uh, or to other counselors as well. And thank you guys for your time. Okay, Councillor Despard. Thanks, uh, Mr. Mayor. Um, yeah, I'm a big supporter. I think this is great. The one thing I just, uh, uh, what is the blue on the map here? I just can't figure out what the blue is. Is that water? Wetlands. 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 So the blue by the basketball building is actually, um, our understanding is it's detention ponds that were installed 
to put all the drainage in for the parking lots. This proposal will remove 15 acres of uh, parking non, lots. Non-pervious conditions. Non-pervious conditions. And we all remember a couple of years ago, Route 5 flooded when everything else, because water from that whole area flows under there and it flooded Route 5. We're going to help eliminate, eliminate that problem instead of making it worse. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, at this point, I am going to uh, read the resolution. Be it resolved that the proposed transfer sale lease lease of the portion of Brainerd Park shown on the attached map is referred to the Planning and Zoning Commission in conformance with the requirements of Connecticut General Statute 8-24. So moved. Uh, Deputy Mayor second. Sakala and a second, uh, Councillor Ungar. Um, Sheila, roll call, please. Councillor Hopkins. Four. Councillor Ludwig. Against. Councillor Mangini. Four. Councillor Nelson. Whoops. Um, he's abstaining. Sorry. Councillor Pisner. Four. Councillor Santanella. Four. Councillor Ungeyer. Four. Deputy Mayor Sakala. Four. Mayor Crisati. Four. Councillor Despard. Four. Councillor Finger. Four. That's nine members, four, one against, and one abstention. Okay. Thank you very Th much. Thank, thank you, you very much. You know, we much the, and, we, and we move on to the next process. Yes. Thank you. Greatly appreciate it. Good evening, everybody. Thank you, Andy, and your team. Thank you. Okay, item, item number seven, public communications. Any pers uh, person wishing to speak in front of the council, <clears throat> please state your name and address for the record. You will have five minutes. Uh, the first round, and if there's time, we'll, we'll have a second round, which would be three minutes. Uh, we want everybody to please be respectful, refrain from personalities, and we're ready ready to move forward. There will be a one-hour time limit, and I'm going to be setting that right now, and the time is 7.36. Is there anybody wishing to speak in front of the council? Mr. Janitis. My name is Peter Janitis, Three Farmstead Circle. And before I say what I want, came here to say, this whole proposal I just heard is, uh, wow. I'd give them all a Brainerd Park and have them make new parks and stuff up at Fermi or something like that, or at some of the junior high or Enfield High School, and give them all the room they need to make this even bigger and better. Because I know I have grandchildren that play in uh, ACU, uh, um, basketball and soccer, and they travel from Utica to Syracuse, down to New York. It's all over the place. And this would get them in town. <laughs> okay, so I, I, man, I would I would jump all over this one. Okay, the reason I came originally to speak is I have a couple questions to ask the council tonight, and hopefully get an explanation and answer to some of these topics. First, the BAA investigation. Apparently, I think Councilor Prisoner has asked for some updates. The last I heard, and I don't know if you've gotten any response since last time. And so I, I, I would uh, hope one of you could explain how someone under investigation who created a circus climate for many, many townspeople when it came to their assessments is still attempting to do his job fairly. Is this an issue under the control of the town council or the town manager? So please explain what's going on in this investigation. Secondly, the fire stations. Uh, again, I'm looking for a public explanation. Rumors are running amok. Uh, there are rumors out there that Shaker, Ponds, uh, Shaker Pines and Hazard Districts are trying to uh, consolidate. Uh, if this is true, please explain it. And is there any kind of plan for consolidating all five of the districts? When it comes time to collecting the taxes for the districts, who's going to be responsible for the collection of said taxes, the town or the districts? Who's going to pay for the potential consolidations, the town or the district? Thirdly, thirdly 
Where are we when it comes to some of the vacant buildings in Enfield? When we closed HP Stowe, we continue to make use of this building. And it's being fully used right now. Are there any plans in the works to, you, to make use of Nathan Hale? Could it be used as maybe something to help the town homeless? A daycare facility in that section of town? Maybe a teen center? Maybe turn it into a senior housing unit, similar to what was done at St. Adalbert School? Or simply try selling the property? Uh, also, please try to explain fully uh, what's going on with this 30% abatement in regards to Winstan the Wind Stanley property? I really hope you're not trying to shove something down the town's uh, people tonight in one night uh, without them having a fair say to, you're bringing it up again, let them come and speak again like you did at Fermi High School. I wish you all a happy new, new, I wish you all a happy and safe new year, and I hope we all start working together for the betterment of the town people of Enfield. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, next. Go ahead. Good evening, Gary Young, Abbey Road. Uh, I have a few, few topics tonight, but I'll stick to the first one for the first section. I want to raise a concern about the transparency and timely notifications of issues impacting our residents. I've raised this concern, concern with the town council in the past, specifically with the proposed 2023 budget, property tax concerns, and the local fire district issues as well. The current issue is the conversion, the conversation tonight about the Wynn Stanley facility getting a potential tax break of 30% over seven years and notice to the residents. This topic was brought up last February 7th and met with a vote entirely against it. I took the time to review the meeting minutes before coming here tonight back in February of 2022 to affirm that it was opposed. Notice to the residents in a timely fashion, along with transparency about how tonight's agenda came together as an example and part of the problem. Here we are talking about the same topic in less than a year, and more importantly, with very little notice. Here's a timeline I could document to notify the residents about tonight's topic. The council agenda was posted on Friday the 6th at 449. No indication to the residents with ample notice anywhere else prior to this. A local news publication in the patch posted this morning at 4.54 a.m. about the item being discussed at this meeting tonight. However, the town manager's social media posts weekly meeting agendas along with certain items, such as the Agrimark ribbon cutting at this facility back on the 28th. I speak to the entire council, mayor, and the manager when I say that these practices of last-minute notifications and selective content must stop. If you are looking for residents' trust, we need former and quicker notifications. I feel this topic was not just randomly decided for a discussion again, and more importantly, why are we, the residents, finding out about it with very little notice? As a suggestion going forward, at minimum, these items should be added to the manager's social media post as a specific communication once they are known. These topics should also be added to the front landing page of the town website. If I click on the link for today's meeting, it should allow for a link to the agenda. Currently, it does not. It only links to the Justice of the Peace vote, which happened tonight. This is the same suggestion I've had for the tax issues in the past mentioned earlier, and we do not expect residents to search all over the site trying to figure out what is on the agenda for tonight's discussions and at last minute. The local town forum took on a life of its own, as you can see from tonight's attendance. This is a topic that was noted in social media Friday afternoon, and you have a full house behind me. Once the topic was learned about and proved that the residents want to know about these things sooner than later, now we have a full room. For the record, currently, without more facts as noted earlier by Mr. Janitis, I do not support the proposed tax relief without fully understanding the impact to how it can or cannot help the town or the residents. I suspect no other resident or small business property owner currently dealing with their property taxes increases will agree with the proposal as, as earlier. Last note, if I go back to the February communications from Mr. Wynn Stanley, it is noted in three different sections within the meeting minutes that were documented on the 22nd of the miscommunication be himself, his attorney, his legal team, and the town. 
How can we understand the true value and the benefits of these differences if we're not being notified of them properly? That's it. Thank you for listening. Thank you. Can I just stand? <laughs> A little more comfortable that way. My name's Kathleen Levesque. Can you hear me? I'm Kath. Lights on. I'm Kathleen Levesque. I live at 10 Winter Way here in Enfield. My property borders the Win Stanley Project. Um, I stood before you less than a year ago asking you to vote no regarding the tax assessment for Win Stanley. And I'm asking you once again to please vote no again. This project, Mr. Win Stanley, has not offered us anything, nothing for this town that's been of value since that building has been built. The only thing he has given us is a monstrosity, aesthetically horrendous to the eyes. It's taken them a year and a half to build a berm that the community had to beg for, and it's still not complete. It's been more than an inconvenience for many of us through this last year and a half. If you want to give Mr. Wen Stanley a break, think about the neighbors who have had to suffer through what we've gone through, costing us countless amounts of dollars to have our pools cleaned and cleaned again, have our properties cleaned and cleaned again, have our air conditioning units repaired, cleaned, serviced. We have had to have our homes professionally cleaned and power washed time and time again as this project has gone on and is still not completed. So I am asking you please to consider you are here to be our representatives. We will be here long after Mr. Win Stanley goes to another city or town to build another building. Please vote no. You just showed an awesome project here. You were presented with an awesome project here. And yes, it takes away a bit of a park. I understand that's not a great thing sometimes. But at least it's something for the community that we can grasp and have hold of. Win Stanley, all he wants to do is just save himself some money. It's not going to help the town. And it's certainly not helping the residents. So please remember that we're asking you to be our voice and to vote no for this tax assessment. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Good. Spot. Sorry, I didn't know. Wait a bit. Yes, I did. Angela Foss, 16 Crescent Beach Drive. Dear town council members, please deny this newly revised application from Wiss Stanley regarding a tax abatement for 113 North Maple Street. The reasons for this include, this proposal should have never been accepted by the town of Enfield because it was previously denied. Residents should have been made well aware of this instead of appearing a mere 24 hours, Feb Friday, January 6th, prior to the town council meeting. This consistent lack of information ahead of time, the town manager, it's so funny that I'm saying the same thing as he did though, but the town manager even has her own Facebook page where this could or should have been posted is wrong. This was a hard no from all the residents. The residents of the town of Enfield should be your first priority. If the town has extra money to give away, split it amongst the residents and or remove the newly created trash fee or the recently added sewer tax. This lack of taxes of Win Stanley or their companies would fall on the backs of taxpaying residents. This property does not qualify for a tax abatement. There are only 20 employees and most will be in-house employees that are relocating, not Enfield residents. From the Connecticut governor government portal, the purpose of a tax abatement is to encourage development or economic activity when a city or community. Governments may also offer abatements to prevent industries with high employment 
from leaving the community, and this is not the case. Your constituents already came out in droves and spoke out against this last year. The town council sided with the residents and had already denied it. This is the same proposal, and it is not necessary. They built it. They need to pay the taxes like everyone else. Considering the economic climate and the overtaxation already, even the thought of this is deplorable. This is an insult to the community and those who stood up against it. The town council approved the tax base for this year and stated the reasons for the increase to many residents was a lengthy list that included, and I'll mention just a few, police, police cars, equipment, education, roads, and expensive improvements and upgrades needed at the transfer station. Therefore, the town of Benfield cannot afford this tax abatement due to the reasons the town council provided and promoted. Taxes are the primary source of revenue for most governments. Among other things, this money is spent to improve and maintain public infrastructure, including the roads we travel on, and fund public services such as schools, emergency services, and welfare programs. We need all the taxes we can get. The strain on our infrastructure that this building will cause, the police, the emergency, the trucks using our roads, the building is up and the tenants are in. This makes no sense. There are many needs in Enfield. I was here when you listed them all as an explanation of the tax rate. I'm sure you can recall. This, this money needs to go towards these extremely important needs. In February, at the last abatement meeting for this project, Mayor Crisotti stated, I listened to the people. We heard you loud and clear. Do you still hear us loud and clear, Mayor Crisotti? The public opposed the building. The public opposed the tax abatement. This will create strains on our infrastructure. Abatements are a privilege, not a right. And the town council already promised to hear us loud and clear. They need to uphold their word to the people of Enfield. Thank you. I'm gonna speak now, Jeffrey Foss. Oh, okay. 16 Crescent Beach Drive, I'm her husband. Um, so, uh, yeah, so here's the question. So if it's okay for somebody to come into town and build a commercial building and expect to get some kind of a discount on their taxes, what about somebody who's building a residential property, a substantial one, and has been working on it for the last three years, wouldn't that person also qualify for a tax discount for, for a home that's coming into town? Because this particular person um, who's building a house in the town of Enfield uh, is employing more than 20 people to do the construction of this house. Not only that, um, I'm going to have continuously having people working for me because I'm running my office out of this particular property, but I'm also going to have groundskeepers and the same stuff that Mr. Wynn Stanley is going to have for his particular buildings. And what's the difference between residential and commercial? If it's new construction, it's new construction. It's bringing more income into the town of Enfield's taxes. Um, I know I'm going to be paying substantial taxes to the town of Enfield, which I already do for my other 10 properties I still have in the town of Enfield for the last 38 years. Um, I just think it would be very unfair if you did something for him and didn't do something for me. That's it. Thank you, Mr. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Floss. Next. Hi, I'm Sherry Jackson. I live at 119 Cottage Road. I've been at many meetings like these, and it seems like the hardworking taxpayer is often not heard. At the last meeting where an abatement was discussed, we thought that you heard us, but sadly, here we are again. Tax abatements began to lure businesses in during the Great Depression. There are many articles that have been published saying that tax abatements simply don't work. 
the most empirically rich modern research has reported no more than a modest influence of economic development, pra development practices on actual economic outcomes. Uh, I'll give you a copy of this so you can see the actual studies. Moreover, even among these researchers who report the largest impacts find the public cost to achieving these effects are high. They did studies and found that the first self-reported um, employment growth in firms receiving such an incentive was substantially overstated. Firms that did not receive a tax abatement were more accurate. Second, secondly, they found no positive and in some instances a negative influence of tax abatements on job growth. Today, unlike the time of, time of the Great Depression, workers are free to choose to work in a wide variety of communities. Most of us do. Clearly, Win Stanley Enterprises has not brought many jobs to Enfield. Enfield is a highly desirable setting and does not require any incentives to lure businesses here, and this is not the Great Depression. Win Stanley Enterprises has developed here more than a few times. Actually, six of his 30 properties are in Enfield. And we also know that the lease agreements are complete at this point, so there is no benefit to the business owners. During my research, I found that the tax abatements are often abused by these large companies who frequently become serial tax abaters. They collect the tax savings and then they move on, leaving behind abandoned warehouses that assault the eye. Tax abatements create winners and losers. It is clear that the residents of Enfield lose and Win Stanley Enterprises wins. Offering corporate welfare is not something that Win Stanley needs. So why are we giving it? This is a bad deal for the taxpayers of Enfield. The taxpayers must make up for the lost revenue while these large companies place additional, very high demands on our infrastructure. We do not get any breaks and our taxes keep going up and we are asked to pay for the damages that these large companies manufacture. The town services that you and I pay for are given to these large businesses for free for years. So when we all get our tax bills and look out from our front porches at the potholes in the street in front of our houses and businesses, we need to remember how these practices, policies, and tax, event, uh, tax incentives have failed us. We have come out before and here we are again the only th with only three days notice of this meeting. I would like to definitively state that myself and many others in this room and those many who are at home do not want to grant this tax abatement for the second time. I would like to respectfully remind you that you took an oath to faithfully and impartially perform your duties. This council should serve the best interest of the public and not Win Stanley Enterprises. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. Is there anybody else that would like to come in front? Yep. Hello, Linda Ostapoff, 109 Cottage Road. Like many others, I'm very surprised to find that we are back where we were one year ago when residents objected to the planned tax abatement for the North Maple Road Wind Stanley property. This building is built, it's occupied, they're not going anywhere. I don't understand what possible gain to Enfield there could be in handing out $2 million worth of our tax money. This should be an easy no vote. I can't imagine that we're back here again. No encouragement should be given in our town to build large warehouses in residential areas of Enfield. This type of development does not enhance our town and it does not bring anything positive other than tax money to our town. We do want to see positive business development in Enfield. I know that tax abatements are one way to foster that growth. To that end, I think our ordinances should be looked at, be changed, and be strengthened to focus our tax abatement dollars, which are our tax dollars, into appropriate development. First of all, tax abatement should be based on bringing quality jobs into our town. 
that's not 20 jobs relocated from West Springfield because those people are not moving here that are going to work at Ag Agmark that are in West Springfield right now. They're going to live where they already live. This I'm talking about bringing real jobs, not minimum wage jobs, is the company that you're looking at bringing real job growth to our town? The answer here is no. Win Stanley is not bringing real job growth in this particular project. The quality of jobs should feature prominently in your abatement calculations. Second, requests for tax abatements should be analyzed for added value to the community and prioritized accordingly. Give abatements to projects that attract customers, enhance the image of our community, and provide needed products or services. A project like the proposal for the Mass Mutual site might meet these requirements very well. Third, when we look at the number of complaints about the kind of notice that we had that this was happening, item G, resolution to approve tax assessment agreement for Agrimark and Eppendorf at 113 North Maple Street for the October 2023 20, grand list. That in no way represents accurately what's going to be discussed under item G. And we were only notified about it on Friday if you dug down to item G and read into that some meaning that it has, which is a, approximately 2.3 million over 10 year give back. To that end, I think a special meeting should be a requirement for passing an abatement. I think every time our town council considers giving a business back our tax dollars that we should have a public special meeting, a right for the community to come out and speak to that. I don't think that the current tax abatement we're talking about would meet any of the standards that I just mentioned. I hope you will vote no on this. I'm very excited to see what's happening with the Mass Mutual project, and I you know, feel strongly that that looks like a positive thing. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Next. Lisa Rogers, 8 Winter Way. I have bought the property. I invite all of you to come to 8 Winter Way and have tea with me any day this week. My house is shaking. I thought before it was just a matter of, you know, I'm just being sensitive. I, I don't understand what construction is all about. I, I truly wonder, will I have foundation issues? after this project is done. I understand that they have to bat this, this berm down. I understand that we asked for this berm, but it's a year and a half, and my house is shaking. My husband works from home. I, I wish there was a way that I could videotape or have you experience what's happening here. Um, and part of this is my fault that I hasn't come, haven't come forward to you to say, this is affecting me daily. I have people, oh, you live down over there? I saw five trucks come by with dirt. Guess what? They come by 10, 12 times a day, and that's just the dirt. That's not the, the, the tractor trailer trucks that are going to be coming by um, with their, their daily usual work. Um, it, it just amazes me when people say, oh, now I understand what you were talking about, because you, you haven't been there. Um, I hope that you vote no. I don't see anything that has changed on Win Stanley's part between when they asked before and when they asked now. I feel like some decision was made and some deal was made with Agrimark and the other lessee that he didn't have at the time um, that their, their, was their rent going to be less because they thought they were getting this abatement? And if so, why are we paying for that bad decision? That's a business failure. That's it. That he, he put something ahead of what was actually granted or publicly granted. Why are we paying for that bad business decision? The business should be paying for that bad business decision. We're talking about local jobs and that this man is building stuff and using local contractors. And there's no local contractors that were being used for this project. It's all been outside people. 
We said no. We thought you heard us. I, I'm coming, when, again, I'm a parent. When the project comes forward and my children say, so ask for something and I say no with good reason, and they come forward with nothing that's changed and ask again, I'm gonna say no again. Why do I have to keep coming back to you all and saying no again? No again. At least let us know, and I hope in the discussion that you have tonight prior to this that we find out why and what has changed that makes us want to say, oh, okay, we'll give this to Lynn Stanley. Um, by the way, if we could have the records changed so that the property in this instance is actually listed on the assessor's grid as 113 North Maple Street, it's listed only as 113 nor, uh, Maple Street. So it's, again, from a public view, are you trying to hide it? <laughs> are we trying to not let our taxpayer, our, our people know how much taxes are being paid or, or are owed by particular companies? Um, and it's very difficult to try and find out. That PPF that he puts in front of his businesses, I understand it's a business name and all, but it's difficult in our tax database to find out specifically what he did own or what other companies own in, in, in town. I hope that Mr. Nelson also discusses his relationship with this project from start to finish. Um, he did sit at the um, planning and zoning and on that when it was actually granted against everyone in his constituents saying that we didn't want it. Um, and now he sits and is able to vote on the assessment abatement. Um, is there a conflict of interest? At least if there isn't, let us know. If there is, I hope there's a recusal. And I think, I'm sorry, thank you, thank you for listening. And again, eight winter way, um, anytime from 7.30, 7 o'clock in the morning till about three in the afternoon, come on over and I'll share your, my experience with y'all. Thank you. Hello, uh, my name is Lisa Batchelor. I live at Six Deer Run. Good evening, Town Council. I'm here tonight to speak against the proposed 30% tax abatement being sought by Wynn Stanley Enterprises for 113 North Maple Street. <clears throat> As you know, abatements are for properties that are beneficial to the growth and prosperity of the town. This property is not beneficial to the growth or prosperity of Enfield. <clears throat> what it is bringing is volumes of truck traffic resulting in roads that will deteriorate quicker than anticipated, leaving the burden and cost to repair these roads to the residents of Enfield. <clears throat> How can giving a 30% abatement add to the prosperity of Enfield? Surely that 30% of tax revenue could be used to better our community and ultimately the residents of Enfield, instead of lining the pockets of a multi-million dollar company. I urge you to vote no to the proposed abatement. Show the residents of Enfield that their needs and well-being come first, not a multi-million dollar company. Please vote no. Thank you. Well, I'll, I'll let you go. Kathleen, you, you'll be next. Hello, Lori Parker, 105 Cottage Road, deja vu. <laughs> I would like to state that I am not in support of the tax abatement for 113 North Maple. It does not seem fair to shift the tax burden to residents with increases on our taxes and fees, including paying for a second trash can, large increases in property values, and farmers losing their tax statuses. How does this abatement benefit the residents. There should also be rules for these abatements, such as how many abatements are given to a company, one abatement at a time. Currently, Win Stanley Enterprises is receiving an abatement on the former Hallmark building. 
incentives for reuse of a building, and I do have to agree the hallmark abatement made sense. Incentives for bringing in a significant amount of jobs, 20 jobs in a building of that size is not significant. And lastly, how many abatements have already been granted in the last five years by the town, which would be good to know for now as well. And how does this abatement help Agrimark and Eppendorf, who have already signed their lease agreements and their taxes are based on their own personal property? Are their trucks also registered in Enfield so that we receive the, the motor vehicle tax revenue as well? We need to consider the costs of the new warehouse. It was also stated for the reconstruction of Moody Road, they will need to make significant a significant cut along with a heavy base of 21 inches due to the anticipated increase in truck traffic. I would like to know what the additional cost of that project would be. There's also other things to consider as the increase in traffic, and we see the issue on our small dead-end street with trailer trucks uh, coming down Cottage Road, and we have not even seen these trucks start to roll out of 113 North Maple Street and have not felt the full impact this building will have on our town. The neighbors have already dealt with dirt, dust, noise, and their house is rattling. The project contributed to the loss of property value for those surrounding homes and the reduced quality of life that comes with a development like this, as well as an additional strain on fire and public safety services. All of this has to be considered, not just the economic benefit, which isn't much when we figure in the town infrastructure costs. We need to think about what we are encouraging for Enfield. We are certainly business friendly. As an example, tonight's ARPA awards to local businesses. However, we did not seem prepared for this warehouse boom. Since this project and others in the pike, the town recently passed the moratorium on warehouses over 200,000 square feet, requiring a special permit. So we're now looking at how to handle this new boom in development. Our 1999 plan of conservation and development showed 68% of Enfield was already developed, and at that pace, the town would be built out in 14 years. Well, that would have brought us into 2013, and we're now 10 years past that. I'd like to know where Enfield stands now. I hope you all do vote no, as you did in the past. And, you know, five of the council voted against granting $151,000 in ARPA money for the lake spillway, which directly impacted flooding all the way to fresh water, citing it was on private land, even though the town also owns property in that area. And this is over $2 million to a private company. We are your voters. Please vote no. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Kathleen? Good evening, counselors. Happy New Year. Um, I don't have a prepared statement. I, I didn't have time to prepare one. I didn't realize the, you know, the meeting was going to be tonight. Um, so anyway, um, I feel like Na it's... Name and address? Oh, Kathleen Sarna, 102 North Maple Street, Unit 6B. Thanks. So I didn't come with a prepared statement, um, but I just want to make a couple of remarks. Um, the 20 jobs, really, I don't where are they coming from? They're like They're not coming anywhere f from out of town. They're not bringing anything to the town. Um, when you say the abatement, 30%, what are you basing the 30% on? What has the property been appraised at? Has it been appraised? If so, who appraised it? What did they use for comps? Um, you know, what is the appraisal? What are, what are we talking 30% of what? So um, that is a question that I do have. I don't understand why we're even here again. There's only one new addition to the council from last February, and that would be Mr. Nelson. Um, and the rest of you all voted no. So why are we even back here? I mean, did your parents not teach you that no means no? <laughs> I, I don't understand. So, but we are back here again, and I do urge you to continue to vote no. Um, because if you don't, you're just, I don't know, liars? 
changing your mind? I don't know. Um, but you did vote no originally. Um, I am definitely in favor for the uh, sports project. I think that would be very exciting and welcoming to Enfield, much more than a warehouse. Um, so I do understand the triple net lease. And if the renters are coming in, expecting a tax break, which is very desirable to renters who do triple, triple net leases. Um, I don't know, maybe their lease is conditional on that. So, but uh, I still, again, urge you to vote no, like you did the first time. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else that would like to come in front of the council? Yeah. Yes. Good evening, uh, Liz Warner, 74 West Shore Drive. I cannot believe we're back here discussing this tax abatement when not even one year ago there was so much public outcry that we had to hold a special meeting in a packed auditorium even though it was a miserable icy night. The taxpayers talked for hours about Winstanley Enterprises about why Winstanley does not deserve any more abatements, regardless of an illegal backdoor agreement that was made with a town manager so unprofessional that he quit his job during a televised town meeting. But this council did the right thing and turned it down. Since then, there have been so many complaints about the North Maple Project not following the agreed upon parameters. A town liaison had to be appointed to take it at least weekly, if not daily, complaints. Now we learn that a new secret deal, or secretive deal, is happening, is to be voted on tonight. I wonder who exactly is benefiting from this deal, because it certainly isn't benefiting the town. If my math is correct, we will lose at least $8 million in taxes for what they claim will produce 20 jobs. Assuming there really are 20 new jobs that can be filled locally, that's $400,000 per job. Think of all the town issues that could be addressed with that money instead of giving a free ride to a developer already enjoying other tax abatements who has been shuffling businesses from other nearby communities and clogging our roads and lungs with residential, in residential neighborhoods. Tax abatements can be useful, but let's save them for businesses that truly bring products needed to our region and significant jobs with it. Thank you very much. Hey, thank you. Hello, my name is Kyle Bell for Stanley Drive. Just made me want to get up here and introduce myself. I believe I'm on the agenda for the Infield Housing Authority. So if that comes up and you guys have any questions for me, I'll be sticking around for that. So thank you, Kyle. Yep. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. Thanks for coming and thanks for listening. And hopefully you act responsibly here. Neil Nark on 5 Clear Street. Uh, I, I'm very surprised we're, we're doing this thing again. And uh, last time at the last meeting, I kind of summed it up near the end because I was probably near the last of the, of the speakers. And everybody in the audience, including the ones listening online, and even the town council, I think was 100% against this thing. So why, why are we even discussing this and wasting time when so much other stuff to cover? Uh, the other thing that should be handled a lot more responsibly is advance notice of any of this kind of stuff. And it's not just for this, but uh, seeing something in a patch the same day that the meeting's taken account of or in the JI or in these other papers, uh, are they purposely holding out to the last minute, hopefully nobody's going to fight them, or they just don't know themselves? I mean, those are our only ways of knowing this thing, going on the Internet. And, and if you have to search around on the websites here to, to find this information, it's, it's, it gets to be frustrating at times. Uh, 
the economy is doing good, right? Right now, we got like 60% of the people living paycheck to paycheck. A good part of those as well living on credit cards, trying to keep up their status quo. And I'm sure they're going to be real happy to give money away to uh, uh, somebody who really needs it more than them. So do what you got to do, but uh, vote this whole thing down. I mean, this is enough is enough. You know, we just did this less than a year ago. And, and what's he going to do a year from now? How he wants more, he's going to want more. Let's, let's keep adding on to these abatements. It's got a good thing going. I know a lot of us individual taxpayers would like to have a little abatement ourselves. You know, if you're going to give it to him, just kind of cut the expenses for everybody. Okay? So, Bob, you've heard us before. You've listened to us before. You know what to do. Thank you. Thank you. I'm not going to read all this. <laughs> I'm Tony Renner from 12 Ryefield Drive, Enfield, and um, I'm not going to rehash a lot of what's what's already been brought up here, but deja vu all over again and the fat lady singing, so let's shut her down, okay? She, Gwen Stanley keeps coming forward, and I, and I think it would be in, in the best interest of all you folks up here that in full transparency, we know who it is who's putting forth these uh, you know, asks for these tax abatements. I don't see where that's being out there for the public to see. Um, so that's one point that I would like to make. Secondly, anybody who can build warehouses on pure speculation, as Win Stanley's doing in Windsor, certainly does not need tax breaks in Enfield. This, this corporation is doing very well, and it seems like he doesn't need to have any more money put into his pockets. The other thing is, uh, I think further on down tonight, uh, there's going to be talk about uh, possibly asking the state to somehow uh, not ask the town to pay back $202,000 for, for the Nathan Hale loan that they give the town of Enfield. The tax revenue from this tax abatement would go a long way to pay off that if you guys can't work a deal with the state. And then you can sell that school off and they can do whatever they want to do with it. But right now, it's just an albatross. So, and one last thing, 30% of what? 30% of what? There was no talk about, is it going to be off the 50 million that he had talked about the first time around, bringing it down to like 39 and then 27. There's no meat on that bone. We don't know what it is that you guys are talking about. So please, let's be transparent on this. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Is there anybody else that would like to come in front of the council? Good evening. My name is Christine Gummo. I live at 19 Winter Way. Um, I was at the last meeting last year in February when we uh, met to talk about the first proposed tax abatement. And much of what I've heard tonight, I heard last year. But beyond that was the emotion that was brought to that meeting last year. And I hear it again. And it really surprises me that um, that wasn't taken more into account into getting this type of information out to the community. Um, as representatives, as elected leaders in our community, um, it is my hope that you vote no on this tax abatement. I stated last year, and I will state it again, I've lived in this town for 26 years. I am impacted by this building as I live on Winter Way, um, and I, my husband and I agree, and we raise our children to know that not everything is um, for your benefit only. If it is for the greater good, sometimes that is the route that you have to go. 
I have never heard once what the greater good is allowing Win Stanley to have a tax abatement. Last time that we had this meeting, I had some time to reach out to everyone via email, and I was able to speak to some people via the telephone, and I was able to ask those questions. I was able to ask questions like, okay, according to the town website, there's an abatement application. Did they fill one out? Um, are there requirements? That, they, that a new business should meet to be allotted a tax abatement. And I was told what a tax abatement was. I have never once heard any reasons, and I think the 20 jobs that might be located or not located, that doesn't matter. There is no concrete communication or transparency regarding um, the reason that this company should receive this tax abatement. I don't, I'm learning how things work. I'm new to being here at the town council meetings to speak on behalf of the community. I will tell you, as a resident, I was on that planning and zoning call that lasted five hours, five hours before that was shut down. And I, we were told, all of those people, my neighbors, my friends, all of the people that lived in that surrounding area, we were told, geez, I'm sorry, hands are tied, nothing we can do. Well, tonight, you can all do something. You can listen to what everyone is asking of you. We either want information or we want a no vote on this tax abatement. Thank you very much. Okay, thank, thank you. Is there anybody else that... Walter. Walter J. Cruzel, 21 Charlie Road. I am not here about the tax abatement, so we can turn the page. I think we've heard enough. Um... Got the new calendars for recycling over, uh, over the last couple of weeks, and I flipped it over, and there's a lot of information there about what can be recycled and what can't be recycled and what parts, like a plastic cup, you can't recycle the top of it, but you can recycle the cup, you can't recycle the straw. And I think that's something our new deputy uh, public works director should come in and maybe do a show and tell. I know we did one years ago, but I think it's due that we should do another one because I know we are paying now for for uh, recycling. And if we don't do it right, then they're just going to charge us more. So I think it's due f that we could meet our new deputy uh, public works director. And then another thing is it's been more than a year that we passed what was what was said as the referendum. And I don't hear anything about it. Here it is, January, we should have uh, the uh, Joint Facilities Committee should be named as Building Committee for those roofs, because that's required by the state. There should be architectures already working on plans to get the roofs going so we can get out for bid. And, and again, we have a, another new uh, deputy uh, public works director for projects that Again, nobody's seen him, but it'd be nice to get him in and give us an update on where we are with the referendum, because I know the roofs that were done already were part were in the budget, so it had nothing to do to do with the referendum. But it'd be nice to get an update on that, seeing we hired these two new people and nobody's seen them yet. So, other than that, happy New Year. Um, and I'm just going to say thank you, Mr. Wynn Stanley, for what you do for this town. Thank you. <laughs> thank you. Uh, is there anybody else that would like to come in front? Yeah. Hello, my name is Dale Butramovich, 11 Winter Way. Um, I basically want to uh, echo and agree with everything that's been said for those who've looked at this uh, proposed a tax abatement and all the reasons they gave are valid. You all understood them at one time. I hope you remember those days. But I want to make two, two quick points. When I first looked at it, I said, why? why? Why are we doing this? We did it before, it was shot down, and now we're doing it again. And it, it, it occurs to me, when, when this was in the PZC, uh, we were told hands are tied, as Chris said, nothing we can do. But 
when it came time, you know, this is a right of their use, it's, it's a use of right that they have, but we uh, grudgingly had to finally settle with that. But a second thing came up. This is purely your choice. This is an incentive. And you have another development that is on the table, and you're incentivizing these kind of developments, large distribution centers. That's what you're doing. You're sending a message out there, we want these. It's okay with us as a town council. And I just think that's wrong. And you're voting on a resolution that quite frankly, I don't understand what it means. We're gonna authorize town manager to have a negotiation within some parameters with the benefits going to Eppendorf and Agrimark? I, I don't get it. What, did they ask for it? Are they gonna get a personal property, uh, manufacturer's property uh, abatement? Does Win Stanley get a rebate? I don't, I don't even understand what you're voting for. And I, I hope you do. I really sincerely mean that. I don't understand what that means. It's as clear as mud. So it's, it sounds harsh, but it's really a deep frustration from my side. So that's all I have to say. Is there any other people that would like to come? Yep. Liz Davis and I reside at 201 North Maple Street. Really, it's amazing to see how many people are here. Cold night, think you'd be home with your families. That's where everybody should be. This was already brought up. This was already voted on. The people were told something. Now, last minute, it's thrown on agenda, and we're going to supposedly vote from what we're being told as the residents. You guys are voting tonight. I really hope that's not going to happen. For a last minute, putting it on the agenda, look at your turnout. No notice was given. It was kind of hidden. Everybody's right. Put it out there. Let the residents have a voice. It is a maze. There is only one new person on the council, and now it's back up for vote pretty quick. What really shocks me is how much we want to do for this company that my house shakes when the trucks go by. Thank you. I guess we're going to look to move. So that's really great because I'm definitely not going to keep wondering why my house is shaking because of these trucks going by left and right. But here's the whole thing that shocks me. Just a few weeks ago, I watched a locally owned businessman be kind of torn down. Jimmy's Pub. And let's put this up on the road so they don't have parking. And let's do this. Now they don't have their live entertainment. Let's do this. That's locally owned. He lives here. He donates to everything for our schools. He is a big part of our community. And I kept watching him get torn down. Isn't that amazing? It just makes me wonder. Does he not line people's pockets enough? Because he is a small business, and only these big people with millions can keep getting the breaks? It's bullshit. Let's do what's right. We have about four minutes left uh, with public communications. Is there anybody else that would like to come in front of the council? Okay, I declare public communications over. Mr. Mayor, uh, given that I think a, a good portion of the crowd is here for the abatement issue, uh, I would I would move to um, suspend the rules and move up G just I think to get folks out of here uh, so I would second that I thought you guys had a problem with moving items up on the agenda you voted against it last time when I tried to do it I'm just putting it out there well we had a motion on the table to move this up 
and we had a second. Um, so we will have a vote. Anybody in, uh, let's, in favor of the motion, we will take a hand vote. In favor of the motion, raise your hand. One, two, and against. Motion fails. We will now move on to item eight, Councilor Communications. Councilor Pisner. Thank you. You're welcome. Um, to the town manager through the mayor. Just a couple of things. I did get an update on the POCD, which I'm thankful for. Um, it looks like it's gonna be at PNZ this Thursday. Can you tell me what the status after that is gonna be? You can wait, wait for the report. Okay, so you're okay. going to be going over that. Okay. Um, and the second thing is um, the DEI. Do we have any plans for a meeting that's going to be coming up? or And that's coming up on the report, too. Okay. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Any other councilor communications? Councilor Mangini. Thank you. Just uh, one thought through our mayor to our town manager. Um, perhaps we could at some point in time, look into having our public works department brief or give a presentation on recycling. I think it is overdue. The refresher might be in order. Thank you. Councilor Ungeyer. Uh, good evening. Through the mayor to the town manager, uh, Rotary has been asking about placing three signs strategically um, on Route 5 and in summers when you enter Enfield from those neighboring towns. Um, they had them up there before and somehow they've disappeared and they'd like to make new signs and put them up. Um, I'm not sure what the protocol or who would, could handle that, maybe buildings and grounds or um, they also want to put a, a new sign on the adopt a spot that's out by Longhorn. They plan on uh, revamping that whole area and making it look nice. Thank you. Okay, uh, uh, Councilor Ludwig. Again, through the mayor to town manager, this is part of your report. No worries. Um, is, is there a pending application for the work that's being done at the bridge for inlands and wetlands or PNZ? I don't think there is. I, I saw the agenda. If, is there any kind of pending? I know there's dirt piled in the parking lot. I actually went down there myself to take a look, and there's those big boulders that I think the dirt is inside of them, I believe. That's usually how you do the, you know, if there's contaminated. South River? Yeah, South River. Sorry. If you could, and if there's a pending app, if there's not a pending application, the residents should be able to reach out to the, the counselors. I, I saw some communication. Again, if there's a pending application, I get it. But if it's not, it's not in the agenda, the resident has every right to reach out to a commissioner. And just curious, if, if the dirt is in those, I guess it's a makeshift, I don't know what you want to call it, boulder <laughs> pen, for lack of a better term. I'm sure I'm not giving it. It's right next to the individual's home. So I just, hopefully we can have some communication with that individual. And I'd appreciate it if it's part of your report. And thank you. Okay, thank you. Councillor Hopkins. Oh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, a couple of issues I think spun off of, um, uh, spun out of public comment, and, and something which I think has been discussed a couple times uh, in the last year is uh, tightening up our uh, abatement guidelines. I think that's something I would really like to see, especially in regard to um, jobs, uh, and maybe we have uh, we can style it off of other communities that do this. But I would really like to take the opportunity in the first few months of this year uh, to work collaboratively and bipartisanly um, about, uh, on this, and maybe bring something back. Uh, on the same, uh, in the same vein, uh, I think an idea that might help with some of the truck traffic issues that have been raised here is uh, prohibiting semi-trucks for on certain town roads. I, I live on Brainerd, for example. When I come home from work, sometimes a semi will be coming down, uh, and when it turns right on Route 5, it actually jackknifes because there's not enough of a turn radius. Uh, I personally would prefer, and I think a lot of other people would, uh, for trucks, especially with this Win Stanley project, to go uh, to be using state roads only. Um, there's a lot that goes into that, and I know it's been discussed a little bit um, on public safety, I believe, and I would like to see that. I think that would help address some of the concerns folks have raised here uh, and uh, to me personally. Um, thank you. Okay, thank you. Are there any other communications? Councilor Nelson. Uh, through the mayor to the town manager. Um, I know years ago when I sat here, the state of Connecticut made a law, um, asset for 
forfeiture law where if a drug dealer got pulled over in possession, they lost all their assets, cars, money, stuff like that, and the money was split between the town and the state, I believe. One, is that law still in effect? And if it is, can we get a summary of what they accumulated last year and what ended up being the town share of that? And then um, second through the mayor to the town attorney, uh, under the town attorney's report, if I'm correct, we've looked into um, blocking trucks from public roads and it is state law. We are not allowed to do that on a public road. So if you could just address that when it comes to your re report, I'd appreciate it. That's all I have. Thank okay, you. Th thank you. Uh, there are a couple of, uh, for tonight's communications, <clears throat> I just want to mention uh, that we want to be proactive in helping uh, small businesses in, in another way. And there are a few town ordinances that really need to be reviewed. So this is to the town manager and town attorney. Um, and to be, and it hasn't been updated in years. Uh, three examples that I, that I can think of and I want to bring to everybody's attention is the, the massage ordinance, uh, the massage parlor ordinance back in, uh, I don't know, 40, 40 years ago when, when that was up there. Uh, the food truck vendor license process and also uh, Sunday liquor sales. Uh, a small physical uh, therapy, occupational therapist recently tried to expand his practice by adding massage therapy and had to go through several hoops in order to get a permit through the town. All right, so, you know, we really have to look at that. The health district and the state have regulatory authorities over these establishments. So uh, the town doesn't need to do anything beyond uh, this here. So uh, authority over these establishments. And I would I'd like us to really look um, further into uh, land use functions in regard to this. Um, in Enfield, it's still against town ordinance to sell liquor before noon on a Sunday. So, and in terms of food trucks, uh, there's a complex and very bizarre permitting process that's in on the books. Um, I know that all three of these are going to be headed into the General Government and Finance Committee, committee and to uh, Attorney Talberg's office. So if we could review this over the next few weeks so that we could start taking a look at this and being proactive, uh, I think that would be good. And, you know, maybe to remove some of these old ordinances or, you know, these duplications of uh, things by state law. So um, and then there's one other thing that I want to mention, and it's about AEDs. And I know that this was something that we had brought up uh, prior to this. Uh, you know, lo locations of where uh, AEDs are, are located in our municipal buildings and schools. And and if each one of these facilities has trained individuals at these sites in the event of an emergency. I know that's been a hot topic around the area of late, so I just wanted to bring that to our attention. Other than that, thank you. Uh, Councillor Hopkins. Thank you. Just, just very briefly, uh, it's true that uh, we can't prohibit uh, through truck traffic on town roads because that implicates interstate commerce. So if a truck were traveling, you know, from Summers and, and going to 91 um, through Enfield, that would be a problem. We couldn't prohibit that. Uh, but in this instance, I think what's been raised recently, it starts from inside of Enfield, and there are ways to regulate that. I think there are questions on how to do that most effectively, but I would look forward to maybe having those discussions and see if that's something we can do, because it is a big issue of public concern. Okay, thank you very much. Okay, town manager report. Okay, good evening. Uh, just to respond to some of the counselor concerns, we can do the non-interstate truck traffic issues through the Public Safety Committee, uh, where we would have the guidance of the traffic division. Um, and you're correct, we cannot, if a truck stops anywhere between its starting point and its ending point, even if it's traveling through Enfield, if they stop for gas, if they stop for lunch, that doesn't qualify. There's a lot of nuances to this, and I think it would be best to start with the experts with traffic. So 
public safety uh, does meet on Wednesday. If uh, the chairman would like me to add it to the agenda for a starting point, we can do so. Uh, yeah, uh, through the town mayor or through the mayor to the town manager, we did discuss that in the last meeting, and it was basically the consensus of the the group and of the you know the experts at the Enfield Police Department that it wasn't something feasible. Um, I, I wouldn't be opposed to uh, looking at it again, but it just I, I think I see my uh, fellows on the uh, committee shaking their heads, so I, I, I don't know. Well, I was under the impression that it was probably specific to the roads of concern based on tonight's conversation. If we okay. wanted to take them sure. specifically and have the police department analyze that, specific. one of which is a state road, so okay. we can at least have that conversation so people can have answers. I don't think it would take very long okay. for them to analyze that. Yeah, that, that sounds good. All right, thank you, Councilor Nelson. Um, to chime in on that, oh. Matt, we tried at planning and zoning to stop any traffic from going down North Maple and force them. And we were told the only thing we could do is signage, you know, no right turns and stuff like that. And that was the most we could do as a town. So we covered everything we could possibly try. Were those signs put up? Yeah. Okay. Well, they're Um, in terms of asset forfeiture, that law still is in place. Uh, we recently had um, the chief use those funds to uh, fix some of the motorcycles. So it is an active account, and I can get that summary for the next meeting. Uh, I don't know the answer to South River, but I believe it is a fully permitted project. So I can check on that and get back to you because they are doing work. In terms of the Rotary Club signs, what usually happens in that case is the, the club provides the signs and then we get clearance in order to erect them per um, public works and uh, police guidance. So we can do that if somebody can give me a contact to the Rotary Club. Uh, in terms of the plan of conservation and development, it is a rather uh, involved policy uh, via state law that you have to follow. So in terms of Enfield, we are using January 12th as the start day for the presentation of the draft, the final draft as it was available to the public. We now have from that day, the 65 day count starts. Um, once it's accepted, uh, we make referrals here. It will be on your agenda formally next meeting. It goes to the Capital Region Council of Governments. It goes to the Planning and Zoning Commission and sits there. And then there's an anticipated public hearing date of March 23rd, provided um, that there's not any changes. If there are changes, then you, the town council, may hold one or more public hearings. Uh, those can occur between, between January 12th and March 23rd. Um, if the Planning and Zoning Commission or the town council desires to continue to discuss the draft, they may also add it to their agenda for those special meetings. On February 16th, this, uh, the Planning and Land Use Office would submit the draft to the town clerk and post it on the website, which gives a 35-day notice period before that March 23rd uh, public hearing. And then on March 8th, the staff prepares the legal notices for the public hearings, and those appear in the newspapers of general circulation. And then on March 23rd is that public hearing. Following that, 30 days after adoption, the approved plan or sections thereof must go to the town's website and in the town clerk's office. And then 60 days after adoption, we are legally obligated to send it to the secretary of OPM, Office of Policy and Management, uh, with the state of Connecticut. So those are the dates, and that information will accompany the plan when it comes to the January 23rd agenda. Um, in terms of the Diversity, Equity, and Inclusion Committee, we are looking to have the first meeting of that group be at the end of this month and have them start planning you know, meeting schedules and all of that and have a general uh, get together. Uh, I also wanted to update the town council on the fact that uh, town staff are working with members of the Grays Athletic Club due to the unfortunate fire that occurred over the weekend. Uh, we were on site this morning. Uh, obviously, the fire department did a wonderful job of knocking it down. Police were on scene. EMS responded. We have building officials respond that night. And we've already made calls to the state about historic preservation funds. We are meeting with members of the Grays Athletic Club tomorrow afternoon so that they can kind of plot a pathway forward and... Um, we can help with that as well. In terms of the packets that you have in front of you tonight, I just wanted to draw your attention 
to the updated ARPA, appropriated and proposed ARPA list that appears in your packet. Um, it is often asked by many of you as you track expenses where we are. And so this uh, was updated by Finance Director John Wilcox today. So our adjusted balance before any action that potentially could take place tonight is $871,302 remaining. Um, I just want to draw your attention if you're on the front and you see the orange highlight, that is the Barnard School parking lot where a portion of those funds was returned to the ARPA fund. And you will see that as the adjustment that appears on the second page. So um, that is the balance as we stand right now. It does take into effect, if you go back to the front, the um, allocation for the business assistance grants that you're listening to later, as well as the not-for-profit assistance grants, keeping in mind that there may be people who decline their award if it wasn't what they anticipated or it's not enough for them to do their projects. So there may be some funding that is returned from there as well. In terms of ARPA, there is one other um, item that I wanted to bring to your attention. We've talked about the fact that there's a lot of grant money available, and we have actually received our first ARPA grant in reverse, not going into this fund, but to the police department for um, surveillance and traffic issues to the, I think it was a $37,000 grant that's coming directly to the police department through state ARPA funds. <coughs> also in your packet, you have the um, Community Investment Fund 2030. We have submitted for round two of the state grant. We are asking for $2.3 million to have a small business development revolving loan fund. Uh, this application was made in the summer. They identified larger cities as recipients, so we have resubmitted for the second round, and I provided you the executive summary for this. Um, I have also uh, shared this with our legislative delegation so that hopefully they can advocate for us in Hartford as well. Also at your place tonight, you have the reminder about the JFK Middle School Grand Reopening Ceremony, which is taking place Thursday at 6 p.m. The public is invited. Uh, there will be a brief ceremony, and then there will be tours of the building. And access is through the auditorium entrance toward the back. So everyone is invited to that. Um, and then the last thing that I wanted to cover, uh, based on earlier conversation, you also have in your packet the um, tax abatement guidelines. So to Councilor Hopkins' point, this is the document that I'm providing to you in case you'd like to make any updates. I have highlighted the last paragraph where there are um, a couple of changes that I'm recommending that are just really um, administrative. Uh, the person who is now overseeing it is the Director of Economic Development, not Development Services, and the pronoun changes. I'd also draw your attention to the bolded and italicized section that says the town council is not required to enter into a tax assessment or abatement agreement, and they reserve the right to vary the requirements of an abatement where the applicant shows unique circumstances. So in terms of that language, uh, it is my understanding that most of the town council would like to do one standard abatement. If you are so inclined, you could include that language of your standard abatement within that paragraph, and that could be another edit that you as a group can can talk about. I'm not sure if you're interested in sending the language of the tax abatement guideline to a committee for review, or if you'd like to take it up yourself, but I figured we could just have this in your packet tonight so that you could have another look at it. Okay, thank you. Um, I think it probably would be a good idea if any suggestions will go through general government, okay. and they can have discussion through them. But uh, all proposals or any additions or deletions to this, uh, I would have you uh, suggest to go through leadership, and then we'll get that information for general government. Okay. And I think um, that is all I have for tonight. I do plan on referring back to the tax abatement guideline for the town of Enfield when I discuss the Maple Street, uh, the North Maple Street abatement when it comes up in the agenda. So if you just keep that handy, we'll be referring to that during that discussion as well. Okay, thank you. I'm sorry, Mr. Mayor. Um, the assistant town manager has a brief item and then uh, the town attorney has asked, been asked a question as well. Uh, just real briefly, as part of the annual report to the Town Council regarding the Code of Ethics, uh, Section 
1.29M of the ethics ordinance requires a town manager to cause to be established a procedure to familiarize elected and appoint officials with the duties and responsibilities of their positions as well as prepare a written report outlining such activities for the prior year and plans for the coming year and submit said report to the town council during the month of January of each year. This should be in your packet. There's about six or seven bullet points that um, that we did that we submitted to you to um, apprise you of the obligations under the Code of Ethics. Thank, thank you, Steve. Attorney Talbert? Oh, yes, uh, and um, Councilor Nelson, um, since the time that you came out of the council uh, earlier this year, the rules were changed so that there's no longer a recurring town attorney report. So um, okay. I didn't have a planned report, but and I think your question about the roads has been addressed. But Mr. Mayor, um, you had asked about ordinances, and what I can tell you is that uh, the massage therapist ordinance, we were tasked, uh, the office of the town attorney, with reviewing that to determine if it's outdated. And our conclusion was that um, changes in state law uh, likely uh, uh, do suggest that it is outdated and could be rescinded. And I know a memorandum was prepared and circulated last end of last week. I'm not sure if it made it to all of the council. If it hasn't, I'll get that your way. We do the same thing by looking at the uh, liquor sales and the food trucks um, and make a recommendation whether those ordinances can similarly be rescinded. And as you may recall, to rescind as, a, as I recall, there was a public hearing, and so that's, you may want to do a batch of those as we go through the ordinances. Okay, thank you. It's very coming much. your way. Yep, thank you. Greatly appreciate that. Item 10, are there any, uh, are there any reports of special committees? Uh, Councilor Mangini. Thank you. Just um, one report. The Fourth of July committee um, has begun there meeting process for this upcoming celebration. And they met last night, uh, it was an organization. Other reports, we will move on to new business under the consent agenda. Uh, tonight we have three items for consent. And does anyone uh, need to remove any of these items? Okay, is there a motion to approve consent agenda items one, two, and three? Second. Uh, uh, Deputy Mayor Sakala and a second by Councillor Nelson. All in favor by a show of hands. It's unanimous, 11-0. Next, appointments to the Town Council. Uh, the Enfield Housing Authority, the term of office of William Ballard, Expired 11 22 Replacement will be Kyle Bell until 11 2027. Is there a motion to approve Kyle Bell? So moved. Second. Councilor Nelson and a second by Deputy Mayor Sakala. All in favor? It's unanimous 11 0. Welcome. Welcome. All right, item C, discussion resolution recommendation from the Economic Development Commission for Small Business Grants process funded by ARPA. Um, <clears throat> I would like to make a motion to accept the recommendations by the Economic Development Commission. So moved. Uh, Councillor Nelson second. and a second by uh, Councillor Mangini. I want to start by thanking the members of the Economic Development Commission for their hard work over the last six months. I'm very impressed with the level of detail in the review that went into the criteria in order to determine how they distributed the $250,000 in ARPA funds that the Town Council allocated in the budget process. I'd like to thank Mary Ann Turner who is here tonight, along with some of the members of the commission. Um, and I'd like to thank them for coming here. And I would like the members that are here to come forward um, so that we could recognize you. There's, there, there's Marianne. There you are. Okay. We have a few of us. All right. That's, that's awesome. Uh, first of all, uh, I want to thank you. Uh, for, you know, your commitment and your hard work in doing this. Um, I know all your members aren't here, but I am going to recognize them 
uh, Marilyn Crisati, Kelly Davis, Gresham Pfeiffer Hall, Virginia Higley, Phil Colbert, Stephen Ragnath, Rich Stroney, and uh, our liaison, Councilman John Santanella. Thank you for your hard work. So, um, mo moving forward. Okay. So uh, we, we, we still have more work to do, and because of uh, some of the town council members are going to be interested possibly in a second round. So um, are there any questions um, that we have for uh, Marianne tonight? Does anybody have any questions? That, that's fantastic. <laughs> okay, yeah. Councillor Santanella. So let me let me just say for the record, um, this commission, uh, we have been working together for quite some time, and and I have to say, of all the committees that I sit on, um, this is one of the hardest working groups of people that we have uh, in our community. Um, there were fifty one applications that your group reviewed. Um, myself included, and Marianne, you did an amazing job at putting together a rubric and matrix for uh, there to be a complete and uh, honest review of all of these. And I know it took me some time to read uh, Mr. Hopkins, uh, Councillor Hopkins, I gave him my applications, he was supposed to bring them, but he didn't. But it's a stack of paper like this. And um, I just want the community to know just how hard this group has worked. And I personally want to thank you very much for everything that you've done. Uh, I know that this means a lot to these businesses, and um, I wanted to say thank you. Thank you, John. Well, thank you. We appreciate that. I, I, I really, really want to, you know, um, I think that we might have a motion off off the floor here. Councillor Ludwig. Yeah, thank you. Again, this I, I agree this is great. But again, I also want to make sure you mentioned there was 51 businesses. I think we need to allocate more money to small business, to anyone who th feel whether it's whatever their you know, decision is going to be to help that small business, especially ones who may have actually stayed in business and made sure their employees were working during a pandemic. I like to allocate, I'm, I, I, I'm all for this, but I also like to allocate an additional $200,000 that we have. We have $800,000 the manager gave an update of what's outstanding that we actually all oh, give those other groups that didn't get a, a chance to get this for whatever reason, <coughs> a second chance, or, or even other ones who didn't apply. The purpose of the ARPA money, in my opinion, again, it's printed government money, which is taxpayer money, and it should be open to anyone who feels that they were obviously negatively affected during the pandemic. So I, this is great. I hope we, as a council, decide we need to actually have a second round, because I think we should. And I think, again, small businesses are what keeps this town really going. So I, I approve this, but I hope we can make a motion to add $200,000 for next meeting as part of the agenda to add another round of ARPA money for the small businesses that may have not been rejected or getting it, or for whatever reason didn't apply. That'd be my recommendation. Well, well thank, thank you for that. Um, so let's, let's make that motion. Um, uh, make. The, the motion is made. Discussion. And we will discuss that for next meeting. And uh, so we will, uh, do we need to vote on, on this or by hand, on the floor. a motion on the floor? We had their motion on the floor first. Correct. So we got to we, vote on them. We, well, we're, okay, let's, let's vote on this. I know I'm getting ahead of myself. You know, we, we talk, excited. well, we, we, we talk well, about excitement. So we're. Can it just be an amendment that we want to add? And so we add just one vote? I don't see how we can't, right? No. No, let's let's okay. let's vote on this and yeah. then we'll make the motion. Yeah. So Fair. roll call. <laughs> Whoa. We're, we're voting on the C. recommendations. Uh, Hang on a second, on, just so you know. C. We went over budget a little. That's fine. So I need to make sure that we cover that. Okay. Yeah. No, we're we're good. Okay. Yeah. We are good with that. Okay. So Councillor Hopkins. Four. Councillor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Mangini. Four. Councillor Nelson. Four. Councillor Pisner. Four. Councillor Santanella. Four. Councillor Ungeyer. Four. Deputy Mayor Sakala. Four. Mayor Crisati. Four. Councillor Despard. Four. Councillor Finger. Four. It's 11 in favor, none against. Okay, now we're going to make the motion that was on the table. 
If I'll say the motion meeting again, again. two hundred thousand dollars for consideration discussion at the next council meeting. Second. Okay, so a motion made by Councillor Ludwig and second by Councillor Nelson. S sorry, go ahead. Um, through the chair, for transparency and accountability, because we have to track everything that we do with ARPA to the Department of Treasury, okay. we've been referring all ARPA-related items to general government and finance so that it can be routed back to the town council. So if you're going to make a motion, my recommendation would be that you refer it to that committee so that it can come back to your next meeting okay, via the committee process. Are you okay with that, okay. Mike? As long as um, the um, members I, are fine. I am fine with that. Is there any discussion on this? I would just hold just, one thing. Go ahead. go ahead. I think I would be fine with bringing it to general government, and I don't have a problem doing sort of a second round. I do think it might be more appropriate to have that conversation during budget talks, though, because I think that's where this piece originated as well as when we were discussing budget as a whole and ARPA as a whole. So I don't have a problem doing a second round, but it may make sense to discuss that during our budget discussions. But we can actually talk about that in general right. government if we want to do a referral to general And I government. do think it's two, I agree with you, but it's two separate. I mean, again, this is printed money that came from the federal government. This is not, <laughs> this is not part of our budget, separate money. Sorry, go ahead. No. Okay, Councilor Mangini. Okay, thank you. So if this request uh, goes back to the general government committee. Will the ge general government committee bring it to full council yeah. at, yes. at some point during yeah. a report? Yeah. Okay. Yes, we, we will. We will bring it back to full council. It will be discussed and moved at the, the next right. meeting. Okay. All right. Very good. So every uh, we will by a hand vote. All all in favor? Unanimous. Eleven zero. So. You're going to have your work cut out for you again. Well, we don't but, mind at all. And, you and, and you I know done. that. But I, I really want to thank you, uh, you and everybody that is on that commission for a job. Well done. Thank you. Well done. Thank you. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. Didn't you say we had to approve that, Bob, so your wife doesn't get to come home early now? <laughs> Give her more money? Shh. <laughs> all right. All right. Item, item D. It's the resol resolution for the town council to improve uh, 14 ARPA nonprofit, not prof profit grant program applications totaling $200,000. So moved. Uh, I have, hold on, let me read the, I, I, have, I have to read the resolution first, Ken. I know we're all excited. So be it resolved that the Enfield Town Council does hereby approve the 14 <laughs> ARPA nonprofit uh, grant program applications totaling 200,000. Do I have a motion? Uh, uh, Councillor Mangini and a second, Councillor Nelson. All right. Moving um, on the ARPA funded line item to provide support to nonprofits and not for profits. This one is a little easier to be approved considering there are, there were 15 applications and 14 were recommended here tonight. Um, and the other one was an application from an out-of-town out uh, organization. And this is a memo from the town manager. Uh, uh, and I think it's in our packet, all of the information uh, in regard to that. So I know everybody has seen that. Uh, so are there any questions or discussions in regard to this? Councilor Ludwig. Not, just a procedural question. I, again, I know you just mentioned in the last, but the, the consultant we hired, once this is passed, we'll, make, we'll, we'll also review and make sure, to, again, we have that in a file, right, to make sure this is compliant with all the guidelines. So I'm saying is the consultant we hired to make sure that we're following the guidelines, is, is that individual making, signing off and everything? If so, do we have it in writing in the file? So the consultant that we hired is for purchasing and procurement once an ARPA funded project goes out to bid okay. and yes all of that is being checked off thank you and handled independently and separate from our existing purchasing process thank you appreciate it okay you're welcome uh sheila roll call please councillor hopkins four councillor ludwig four councillor mangini four councillor nelson four councillor pisner four Councillor Santanella. Four. Councillor Ungeyer. Four. Deputy Mayor Sakala. Four. Mayor Crisati. Four. Councillor Despard. Four. 
Councillor Finger. Four. Eleven in favor, none against. Item E to allocate sixty-five thousand from ARPA funds to the five fire districts for COVID nineteen premium pay. Be it resolved that in accordance with Chapter 6, Section 8F of the Town Charter, the following transfer is hereby made. From COVID-19 fund, COVID-19 service pay miscellaneous $65,000 to the COVID-19 fund, revenue grants COVID federal of $65,000, date prepared January 6, 2023, prepared by the Town Manager Ellen Zapusasu and the Finance Director John Wilcox. This is a recommendation uh, that's been approved by uh, general government in the sub uh, in the finance subcommittee to allocate a portion of the town's ARPA up to sixty-five thousand dollars to the firefighters within the fire districts, as spelled out in this resolution. Uh, is there any discussion in regard to this? I think you so moved. Huh? Yeah. So moved. Okay. So moved. Second. Okay. Councillor uh, Nelson is second by Deputy Mayor Sakala. Any discussion? Okay, Sheila, roll call. Councillor Hopkins. Four. Councillor Ludwig. Four. Councillor Mangini. Four. Councillor Nelson. Four. Councillor Pisner. Four. Councillor Santanella. Four. Councillor Ungar. Four. Deputy Mayor Sakala. Four. Mayor Crisati. Four. Councillor Despard. Four. Councillor Finger. Four. Eleven in favor, none against. Okay, item F, discussion resolution to authorize the town manager to negotiate an MOU for the collection of fire district taxes. Uh, can I have a motion to waive the reading of the re motion. resolution, Second. but to make sure it's included in the minutes? Uh, so the motion was by Deputy Mayor Sakala and a second by, De uh, excuse me, Councillor uh, Mangini. Uh, do I have, <clears throat> okay. Is there any discussion on the waiving of the reading? Okay, by a show of hands, we all in a fa favor? Okay, unanimous. Um, okay. So there's been several meetings and some progress um, on the consolidation efforts since last year. And this agreement reflects and encourages uh, this to keep moving forward, this MOU. At this time, um, we've, we had a couple of uh, councillor liaisons, uh, Councillor Santanello and Councillor Nelson, uh, that attend meetings. Uh, and I'm going to just ask uh, Councillor Santanella if you would like to give any background information in regard to this. Sure, thank you. Um, first of all, uh, at our December 19th meeting, uh, the town council accepted a resolution of the intent of Shaker Pines and Hazardville uh, to um, consolidate their fire districts. And um, it's really appropriate that there's a lot of people here tonight who have some concerns about taxes. Um, because as you know, uh, we have five fire districts that operate here special taxing districts in the town of Enfield. And this, um, this resolution or, um, were, is designed to help encourage further consolidation of those fire districts. Um, why is the town council getting involved and why should we care about this? You know, we, we share a lot with the fire districts and the fire departments, but the most important thing that we share is the same taxpayer. And in our last fiscal year, Enfield taxpayers contributed $14.1 million to, the, uh, to provide fire protection services here in the town of Enfield. That's roughly 9% of total tax dollars that were collected for that year. And by comparison to other communities of similar size, that number is, uh, a little bit out of whack. Um, and it's the intention uh, to try to write the future of our fire districts and to help be a part of that. We all understand the history of how we got to this place and how it is that we have five fire districts in our community. But 
we have to look at this and ask ourselves, if we were starting out today, would this be the organization for the future? And I think most people would agree that that answer is no, that there is a better way and that currently we don't have a plan for a fire district or a, a solid fire district, a, a single fire district that is designed for the future. And so that is what we are trying to accomplish here. I know that there are a number of uh, rumors that are floating out there, and I would like to try to address them now. Um, the first is that this is an effort by the town to try to take over the fire department. That is absolutely not what this intention is, what the motivations here are. It is to look at creating a more efficient future for our fire services. So there is no desire to be uh, taking over the fire departments. There's been discussions about EMS and this being a way for the town to somehow unload EMS onto the fire departments. I will tell you, I personally believe that EMS belongs with our fire departments. The process of doing that is so difficult and so complicated that to try to do that now, or maybe ever, given that it's a district versus a town entity, it is potentially unfathomable that it could actually ever happen. But again, not a not a uh, reason that this is being proposed. And, and so that's not true. The other thing is that there's some, that this is somehow something about firefighters. And I will tell you that last Thursday, um, the town manager and I had a chance to meet with uh, representatives of the fire union. And I will tell you that I left that meeting feeling energized about the future for them and their support, and some of them are here today, that they too would like to see a, a fire district, a, 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 a new uh, a fire department that is designed for the future. And so we had made a decision early last year that we were no longer gonna be collecting uh, taxes on behalf of the fire districts. The way this MOU is written and what we're asking the town manager to do is to revisit that uh, and work with the fire districts to resume collecting their taxes if we can get them to also agree to work on a plan for a consolidated fire department going forward. The, the savings to taxpayers, to all of you that are here, is between three to $5 million a year relative to what other communities our size um, spend. And I want you to think about that. It's, it's kind of fortunate that people are here today concerned about taxes. The abatement that we're talking about for Wynn Stanley is about $330,000 a year versus the potential of saving three million to five million a year. So while you're all here, I'd like to encourage you with the same energy that you've come here tonight to visit your fire districts and talk to them about more aggressively working towards consolidation. Because frankly, this is something that requires you to. Um, so I'd ask you to consider that. But I think that this is a great way for us to start to try to move forward. And uh, I am excited to have this opportunity in, in front of us today. Okay, th thank you, uh, Councilor Nelson. Okay, I may not share the same sentiments as um, Councilor Santanella, but we're similar on a lot of issues. The numbers he said about the tax saying savings um, are just by looking at other districts. There's no paperwork backing up any of it. 
and this committee is is being formed to help the fire departments move forward with a consolidation. That's all it's for. The town of Enfield has zero input with the five fire districts. And for them to allow us to have a seat at the table and help them in the process any way possible, I think is beneficial for the residents of Enfield. It's also beneficial for us council members because that's the number one questions we get hit with at election time that none of us have the answers because we're not allowed in these meetings. This MOU allows us to be there for the next five years and we will collect their taxes for the next five years. So it's a working partnership, finally something in writing where the two entities are gonna work together. I do agree with uh, Councillor Santanella, in no way would I ever support the town of Enfield taking over the fire districts. So yes, I would like to see one fire district, but it will be run by the fire districts. And I also agree that I grew up watching emergency and 911, EMS and the paramedics belong with the fire departments, whether it happens or not, but that's where I stand. If there's a savings for the taxpayer, that would just be a bonus. But the bottom line, this is being done and the fire departments also see it because of the quality of service. To get volunteers and even paid firefighters right now is almost impossible as it is police officers, EMTs, teachers, everybody has a hiring problem. So this is one of the avenues they're looking at to try to help them with that issue. It's gonna be a long process. They allowed us at the table and I wanna thank them for it. Okay, thank you. Councilor Ludwig. A procedural question was brought up. So we did pass a resolution last year, or maybe the beginning. Of the, does, there, does there need to be a reference in this in this resolution superseding that decision? Because that was valid to, I believe, July of this year, correct? June. That extended the tax collection through June 30th of 2023, which in essence would mean that we would not be collecting them for the new fiscal year, which is why this agreement is in place. So this will supersede that Right. It will pick up where that one ends and on June 30th. we don't need to reference this at all. Just, just a procedural question. Um, no, it's a good question. We have a stack of these MOUs specific to tax collection that have various terms. Most of them were three. One, this last one was one. This one is five. And it's the same template that we've used other than the references that were included this year to consolidation. Right, thank you. And one, again, I'm for this. I think it's great. It is great. But again, my financial sense, when I see a resolution any resolution, and he uses the word could, the town could use financial assistance or resources. I hate that wording because it's open-ended. Any, any legal interpretation can be used any way it wants to be used, especially if there's a whole new council and whole new people involved. I don't, I like, I mean, I don't want to muddy the waters here, but again, I, I'm for giving technical support, being a consultant, having, having our representatives there but I am not for advocating town resources, meaning financial dollars for this just yet. That's discussion at some other point where that would be a discussion with the fire districts if the town was gonna get involved. And I bet they don't want the town to get involved because they wanna maintain their autonomy. And I would, I would agree with them there. I don't like the term that we could include financial assistance to achieve these goals. Way too open-ended. It opens up an interpretation when maybe people aren't around what the intent of that interpretation was. So for me, I want to just get on the record and saying, I have no desire as a counselor to be using tax, again, we're mixing taxpayer money. I understand people say it's in your right pocket versus your left pocket, but guess what? I want it to stay in the right pocket. It both stays in the left and it stays in the right. So I, I would love to take that word out, but I don't want to muddy the wires with an amendment. But for the record, again, I want to say when this is reviewed five years from now, when we're reviewing this, and I'm not here, I don't want to use Enfield taxpayer dollars. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, just one, one final comment before, before we vote. Go ahead, I'll let Councillor Hopkins go and then I'll have the final say. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Just, just very briefly, I actually don't think there's a, a legal mechanism for the town completely just abolishing the local fire departments. I don't think that's an, an interest, but just for the folks at home, you know, we get all sorts of questions about this because it's floating around. Um, I don't think that's a desire, but even if we wanted to, I don't think we can do that uh, legally. Um, 
I think the big you know, big question that that generates this conversation is: Do we have you know more equipment than we than we need? That's the biggest thing, and I think that's something that none of us can answer. I think it has to be evaluated, uh, and that's what this helps do. So. Um, just one, one final comment in regard to this. I want to thank uh, Councillor Santanella and Councillor uh, Nelson. We, we did all attend a commissioner's meeting uh, not too long ago. And, you know, I am definitely in support of the five-year uh, MOU and collection of their taxes and us having a seat at the table and offering any type of assistance that is necessary uh, to help with the consolidation. I heard it loud and clear from all of the commissioners at this particular meeting, efficiency and service. And that is your definition of trying to want to consolidate. And that's all that, I, that's my final comment on that. Um, I know that we, uh, we waive the, the reading. So right now, uh, I believe we are going to vote on the resolution. Well, we'll need a first on the right. I will so move on the resolution. Mm -hmm. Okay. Second. So moved on the resolution. Okay, by Councillor Deputy Mayor Sakala and a second by Councillor Santanella. Okay. Now we're ready to vote. Gina. No. No, there's no men. Um Councillor Hopkins? Four. Councillor Ludwick. Four. Councillor Mangini. Four. Councillor Nelson. Four. Councillor Pisner. Four. Councillor Santanella. Four. Councillor Ungeyer. Four. Deputy Mayor Sakala. Four. Mayor Crisati. Four. Councillor Despard. Four. And Councillor Finger. Four. It's 11 in favor, none against. Okay, item G <coughs> is the resolution to approve the tax assessment agreement for Agrimark and Epidor F113 North Maple Street. For, October, for the October 1st, 2023 grand list. The resolution reads, whereas PPFWE 113 North Maple Street LLC owns the property at 113 North Maple Street, and whereas PPFWE 113 North Maple Street LLC has constructed a 501, 500,000 square foot building to be used primarily as warehouse storage and distribution facility, by Agrimark and Eppendorf. And whereas the town of Enfield will provide a tax assessment agreement in accordance with the Connecticut General Statute 12-65B and pursuant to the town's tax abatement guidelines effective with the October 1st, 2023 grand list. Now therefore it be resolved that the town manager, Ellen Zapusasu, is empowered to enter into a tax assessment agreement for a 30 percent reduction over seven years subject to review and approval by the town attorney in the name uh, and and on behalf of the town of Enfield with PPFWE 113 North Maple Street LLC to benefit Agrimark and Eppendorf. Date completed January 5th, 2023, completed by the Office of the Town Manager. So moved. Uh, Council, uh, Deputy Mayor Sakala, second, and a second by Councillor Nelson. Uh, before we uh, begin the discussion, I'd first of all like to thank Agrimark and Eppendorf for their commitment to the town of Enfield. I know that this is a hard issue for some who didn't, who really didn't believe this building should even be built. At the end of last month, we did have that opportunity to tour Agrimark and meet with Agrimark and the Cabot staff, as well as some of the dairy farmers that are part of this co-op, and some who reside here in Enfield and farms that reside here in Enfield also. I would like to ask the town manager to provide an overview of the proposal before us tonight that would be possible. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. We are going to work to get the uh, spreadsheet up on the screen. All right, there it is. You're in charge. <laughs> so I know that there is a lot of emotion 
in, on this issue. There, there also appears to be some misinformation that I'm going to try to work through my overview and address a lot of what you've heard tonight as well as go back over the course of the last year. Uh, I think it's important to understand last year the abatement that was brought forward, which actually uh, was in effect uh, in discussion with two previous town managers dating back almost four years, was a descending scale. It was two years of 80, two years of 60, two years of 40, and the last year at 30. What's important, and I think which caused a lot of the discomfort from what I can recall from that, was that it was based on an assessment value that was given to that building while under construction. So we are now fast forwarding a year. Uh, we now have an assessed value. We have finished as of last Friday and putting all of the improvements of the new construction and all the variables of the permit <coughs> into our assessment data. So according to the um, authority vested in you as a town council uh, using state of Connecticut Connecticut General Statute 12-65B, you may offer abatements for up to no more than 10 years. There has been a lot of discussion over the past several months about what fits Enfield. And it is my understanding that we're here tonight because the caucuses have agreed that a standard abatement of seven years with a 30% discount on the, uh, the taxes is where the comfort level is right now. Um, so in terms of the policy overview, I'm going to just start with the policy guidelines that I put in your packet. Uh, the following uses are eligible for assessment abatements per the statute, and you will see there is about 10 items listed. This obviously qualifies, as you can tell, by the categories, which include office, manufacturing, warehouse, storage, distribution, <laughs> and a variety of others. Factors for consideration is the next piece you are only eligible for an abatement if there has been construction of new buildings and or facilities, if there has been an expansion or modernization of existing buildings and structures, ownership or leasehold interest in the property, a minimum of a million dollar increase to the fair market value of the real property. The duration of the agreement should be commensurate with the cost of the improvements and increase in property value. Percentage of the abatement may be on a graduated scale based on the cost of the improvements and increase in property value, and there must be a factor of potential growth to the grant list. And then they outline the goals. Is there an increase to the employment base or job opportunities? Is there a contribution to the Town of Enfield Plan of Conservation and Development, Redevelopment, contribution to the development or employment and or commercial activity clusters? Reuse of brownfield sites, sites with vacant or underutilized buildings, which this was as it was an industrial site, an increase in value on non-manufacturing personal property. So minimum requirements for any tax assessment abatement do include that during the abatement period, property taxes must be current and there is a penalty for non-compliance within the terms of the agreement. So that's what sets the stage for what we're talking about tonight. The policy overview is going to be for tonight on 113 North Maple Street. And I do want to invite our finance director, John Wilcox, to come forward because I do believe there's probably going to be some technical questions that he is best suited to answer. And he's been part of the um, creation of this uh, along with our assessor and other professional staff. So I'm going to start with what we have at 113 North Maple. Um, up until the October 1st, 2020, we had a vacant piece of property that was zoned industrial. It was assessed at $2.4 million. Uh, the mill rate, we're going to assume 30 for purposes of the discussion. The taxes that were paid annually were $73,572. Now we're moving into the new building, the new assessment. We are now basing this assessment at $53 million for that building. This abatement, if approved, will go into effect on October 1st, 2023 and run for seven years. So if you follow the chart, which we do have on the screen, uh, we assess as all property, 
We take the market value or the appraised value. We take a 70%, which brings us in the terms of this building to $37,100,000. So that is their assessed value. We are giving them a 30% coupon, so to speak, for taxes for the next seven years, which means that their assessed value after applying that abatement of 30% brings the assessed value to $25,970,000. For the assumption purposes, the mill rate is 30. As you know, our mill rate is below that. It might go a little above, it might go below, and in the year of uh, fiscal year 2026, we will have another revaluation. So these are assumptions. The taxes that will be paid on an annual basis during the course of this abatement schedule will be $779,100 $779, for seven years, each year, not total. So year one through seven, that is what they pay. At the end of the abatement period, the 30% coupon goes away, and the assumption is that the taxes will be paid in the range of $1.1 million. Over the course of the next 10 years, the town of Enfield can anticipate $8,792,700 total being paid out for taxes on this new building at 113 North Maple. So that is the, the overhead. We also have um, personal property of the tenants, and that estimated value is about $10 million that you will see on the bottom of your sheet. But a couple of other points that I want to be very clear on, because I think it's important that everyone understands exactly what an abatement is. We are not giving money away. As you can see, the tax collection from $73,000 to $779,000 annually is a significant increase. There is no money going in anyone's pocket. It is a discount. Not only that, this money is not going to win Stanley. So no matter how many times people say it, it's not true. He has a triple net lease with his tenants. What that means is that they are paying real estate taxes, insurance, and maintenance. It is built in. I know that I've spoken to the owners of both companies who expressed great disappointment that that abatement was not put into effect because their financial plan and moving to Enfield included what had been promised over four years ago by town manager Tchaikovsky as well as uh, town manager Brazen. So when we have that, that agreement that was never executed but was put in writing, they negotiated those, those rents. Eppendorf um, is a local company. They, the last conversation that I had with Mr. Brosnan, um, last January, a year ago, through when I talked to him in September of 2022, the notes from that phone conversation that I pulled up today, he has already added 100 jobs in the last year. Quote, the building delay hurt him. They are bursting at the seams. Over the next five years, it is a conservative estimate that he may be adding another 100 jobs. When I asked him to break that down, he said he estimated that it would be about 50 on the manufacturing side and 20 on the distribution side, but he was being conservative. These are HR jobs and IT jobs and finance jobs to support the growth in the other areas. The next five years, we're going to be driven by manufacturing warehouse space, which they currently have on Freshwater Boulevard, which they have outgrown. So what he's doing is he is moving his warehousing operation to 113 North Maple. And in order to do that, he is now going to be able to open up that space and double the size of his manufacturing divisions to bring in all of these additional jobs. So the connectivity here is while that one job or the 100 jobs through his conservative estimate or any additional jobs that may be created at Eppendorf may not physically be located at North Maple Street, but those new jobs are linked to that property because if they don't take their manufacturing, if they don't take their warehousing component out of Freshwater and put it on North Maple, they will not be able to expand at Freshwater. We also talked about expediting his permitting process because he's also thinking that he has to expand his 
physical space on Freshwater as well. And we offered him an early ART meeting to come in to meet with professional staff. Um, he's also saying if he had been delayed anymore because of the building supply chain and everything else that his other departments were feeling the growth pains as well and many of those needed to expand as well. So in terms of Eppendorf, the job creation is significant for Enfield in two different locations. The Agrimark job creation is less. It's about 20 to 25 people because this is a warehousing operation. And for those of you who were there, you saw that what they're doing is actually warehousing and aging their dairy products. The co-op dairy farmers that are coming in that are part of that, everything gets parked there and then it eventually gets distributed. This was done intentionally because it is a very low intensity use. So the number of trucks associated with Agrimark are going to be far fewer than what was originally planned and some of the other tenants who expressed interest in that space. So I'd just like to put that on the record as well. Some random comments uh, and responses. Um, Moody Road is, is constructed to accommodate truck traffic and it always has been, and it isn't uh, scheduled for reconstruction, but it is unrelated to what's happening at this project. There are no current Enfield tax abatements on the books. The last one expired a couple of years ago. There were several that have been done over the course of the last probably 25 years. There are none active right now. The one at Hallmark has since expired. There has been one tax deferral that we did for the school uh, that's being renovated on apartments on Hazard Avenue. Um, that is a different program and used um, a historic uh, tax deferral. ARPA funds. Um, we put ARPA funds toward the spillway. I heard someone say that, you know, that's a better use of our money. Well, we did commit to that. And we also committed to talking about it in the budget process. And actually, uh, Adam and Stanley talked about the spillway as well. I, I'm not here to defend Adam and Stanley. I just met the man the first time last year. But when I hear people talk about benefits to a community, you know, they are tangible and they're intangible. There are six large taxpayer buildings that Win Stanley has developed in the town of Enfield that we do not have any code enforcement issues on, we don't have any tax delinquency issues on, they employ people, they're well maintained. I can't say the same for some of the other places in Enfield. Um, I will say that projects like this help to pay for the municipal services that you're asked to provide on a daily basis. So that's another piece of this. Um, in terms of the North Maple versus Maple, I'm going to defer to John Wilcox on that. That came up earlier. Uh, Mr. Wilcox, we were trying to figure that out ourselves, and there is an answer for that. It is not a conspiracy theory, and uh, we will explain that when he goes over numbers or answers questions. Um, so I think that's about it for now. Um, I do know that Win Stanley made a 22-acre open space donation. I know that there have been tens of thousands of dollars in corporate contributions that have flowed into uh, Enfield, 4th of July, Safe Harbors, many others. Um, that's what we expect of our corporate citizens, and he has always delivered. But again, I'm not here as his PR person. I'm here as someone who interacts with all of the corporations here. Um, next month, you're going to see a report from our office that talks about all of the business contacts that we've made over the course of the last year. We are going to be poised to give you that as a state of the city type of address in order to show you some of those business layers. We've talked to a lot of people who are very generous in this community, and and Enfield is very beneficial to have them. So in terms of that, all of this is linked together. Uh, the provision of municipal services based on your tax receipts, uh, the citizenship that we enjoy from all of the people who are here volunteering their time at youth sports and nonprofits and charities, but also that they're fueled by donations from companies like this and many others. Uh, small pop, mom and pops, as well as our larger corporate citizens. So that's just kind of showing you where we are in terms of the market value. Again, $53 million added onto the grand list. The assessed value, 37 million 100. The abatement is 30%, brings us to 25 million 970. On an assumption of a mill rate, the tax is paid annually, $779,100. I will defer to uh, Mr. Wilcox for any more technical financial questions that you might have. Uh, 
for the rest of the presentation. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Nelson. Um, <clears throat> would you happen to know what the taxes were on the vacant land? Um, they're, they're on the top of that spreadsheet. They were um, two and a half million dollars, roughly, was the assessed value using the same uh, um, estimated mill rate on that. Uh, they would have been about 73,000, a little more than 73,000. So um, it would have been a, the the new taxes are about 10 times what the uh, what the existing taxes were. I was told they were a, in a farm preservation grant or they were paying like five grand a year for that piece of land um, because it was being farmed and they had it in a 490 program or something. I believe that may have been before when uh, Mr. Win Stanley bought it, bought okay. the various, there were a, there at one point there were like four parcels of property that were consolidated into one. Okay. So I'm going to say a few things that's not, people aren't going to be happy. Our electric bills are going up too. And our electric bills are your electric bills. And the same group of people come here at budget time and complain that their taxes are getting raised. This is not costing you, the taxpayer, one cent. This is an abatement you can consider. All of you getting an abatement because now we have $800,000 more money that this or a previous council negotiated with this man in good faith <coughs> to get him to come to Enfield and build. And that's how you grow a grand list. That's how you pay your bills without going back to the taxpayers every single year and raising taxes. And you will see me fight at budget time about no tax increases. But this is how I have to do it because we have to come up with money somewhere. So yes, you did get your tax abatements because that's $800,000 I can work with now to pay the teachers their union contract, which they all just got a raise on, to pay for our higher electric bills. Yes, they did. We voted on it. You know, so these are the things, and I keep telling people, get involved. Everybody behind Facebook, including council members, want to start throwing accusations. Get involved and see the other side of it. See the bills that this town has to pay to keep your street lights on, to keep your schools just, just heated. It's just a point of order. I don't, it's, it's not a point of order. It's a fact. They had ex questions. Excuse I'm answering me. them. Because you don't like the answers, Nick? You want All to go right. on Facebook Excuse and blast me. things? Excuse me. I support put, this because it was a promise made by a previous council, and a man's word is as good as his word. That's it. Thank you. Ex excuse me. We're, we're going to have a discussion. Everybody's going to be respectful of your discussion, just like we were very respectful of everybody's comments that they had when they were in front of the council. Enough. Thank you very much. Councillor Finger. Thank you, Mayor. First of all, this town, I've worked for this town for over 36 years, and we've done a lot with the, the, the DPW side, the school side, long before when Stanley ever showed up. I don't think that we should turn our back on our taxpayers. Back in a year ago, police, a year ago, the majority of us voted this down. I know why this is back up. We got the answer from our mayor, uh, excuse me, our manager, town manager, I'm sure this is where it came from. Why are we here again? This is redunculous. It really is. I don't think that we should even be even discussing this, wasting their time, including mine, on this right here. If the next council came along and something other building happens, that's a different story. Okay, so it doesn't cost them a penny to, to, uh, to have this right here. They're not losing nothing. Yeah, they lost things. They lost a lot of things in here. And in my opinion is that it's very simple. We gave our word a year ago that nothing was going to happen. And now something's going to happen. And it's embarrassing to be part of it. I'm voting against this. I think that we should, I think that we owe them because this is, this is going to go prolonging 
into other areas, and I wish he would stay the hell out of, out of Bacon Road. Thank you. Are there any other comments? Councilor Despard. Yes, I just <clears throat> want to say that <clears throat> this is a bad deal for Enfield. I will stay, um, you know, as previously voted, I will vote against this. And I just want to say um, thank you for those of you that came out tonight um, at a moment's notice, showed up, uh, stood up for your, your community and your neighbors, and that's inspiring to me. Um, and I just, I think you uh, deserve far, far better than you're about to get. So thank you. Councillor Hopkins. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, I mean, I think abatements generally, and especially in this case, are really economic determinations. Is it a good deal? What are the benefits? What are the detriments? I know we've heard a lot of detriments. Um, in my opinion, not a lot of benefits. Uh, I know we've litigated this over and over again. Um, when it comes down to it, I just think it's a bad deal. Um, I hope we can use this as a council wherever people land to address the issues that this has raised. I mean, we have a limited uh, you know, space for tractor trailers to, to you know, drive in town. We have a limited space for development to occur. What kind of development do we want to make in infield? What kind do we want to support through these abatement agreements? Uh, I think that's a question that we really need to figure out as a, as a town. And I do really appreciate everybody coming out and telling us what kind of development you want to see incentivized. So at the end of the day, uh, I think this is a bad deal. Councilor Ludwig. So again, procedural. Again, this was voted down. Do we need Robert's rules? Are we following Robert's rules here by bringing up a brand new resolution compared to what was done in February? A uh, no. You may recall originally uh, this was proposed as a 10-year, 50% offer. This is a different, uh, much less uh, generous tax abatement. So right. And I, for the record, I want to be clear. That was the original agreement. What was on the February of last year's resolution was the sliding scale. So that was done, and not by the again. Everyone's pounding the prior manager. It was not done by him. Yeah, you know, that was a whatever that was put together at that night for that resolution. The 1050 was something that was done years ago. For the record, just want to make sure we're clear. Right, too. You know, and so, and John, John, thank you for being here. Yep. Any abatement, so not just this one, just in general, if can they challenge their assessment through an abatement or no? Is that part of the legal contract we would sign with them? Typically, we have language in the contracts that uh, prohibit them from from challenging the, the right, assessments so on the... That's what I thought, okay, yeah. And, and so for me, again, I just I want to I agree that the debate's been belabored here. I think for me, the thing that's changed for me personally, and I've been involved in this really pretty heavily for the last year, I've been one of the ones who've listened to people all across town who we've just been through a reevaluation, and I understand this is probably apples and oranges, but I've seen people who've gotten their assessment, and, and again, we've stated this publicly as, as a town, that this, the burden has been shifted from commercial to the residential taxpayer. That was what happened through reevaluation. And for me, that's what has changed. And so thank you for being here, and I appreciate it. Are there any other comments? I've got one last one. It's easy, I promise you. Councilor Finger. Can we just give Eppendorf something? They're the ones who prove themselves in this town. I'd be more than happy to give them a 50% for 10 years over on Freshwater Boulevard. Can we do that? No. Are you willing to give up no. your raise next year? Yep. No. Are there any other comments? Just very briefly. Um, so the, the current abatement um, package we're talking about does also do personal property for the tenants, just to make that clear. Um, I, I support that kind of abatement. I, I'm not so big on the other one. But Are there any other comments? Yeah. Yes. I want to thank everybody for coming out. Um, my heart goes out to all your reasons, all your thoughts, all the emails, the phone calls. I mean, my head is ready to explode. And, and how do we make this kind of decision? I mean, this, to me, I'm, maybe I'm old school, but I was brought up that if you agree to something that you should, you should agree to what you agreed to and, and live by it and stand by it. Um, this was originally made by a previous council, a previous town manager's. And that's why they built here. Why didn't they go to Summers, Suffield, Windsor Locks? They could have gone anywhere. 
and we want to bring businesses to Enfield to keep your taxes lighter. With COVID, with Hallmark leaving, with Mass Mutual leaving, that's all that, that money that's gone. Um, all sports is coming in. We're trying to look at everything. All sports, if that goes through, that will bring a lot of money. Um, consolidating the fire districts, that will bring some money back in. I mean, there's so many balls in the air that we're trying to juggle, and it's really unfortunate of all these people that live right near that building. And I, I hear and understand what you're saying. Um, but I'm old school, and, and I think we should live by what we agreed to. And in the future, maybe we can learn. Maybe we can learn from this and see down the road, um, make an agreement and then have it built that year, not all these years later. You know, sometimes things take a while. Um, but maybe we can take a tighter look at these type of things at planning and zoning and with the council. Those are my thoughts. Thank you. Oh, okay. I'm, okay. Okay, you're good. All right, first of all, uh, John, thank you for getting all of these figures together. Greatly appreciate it. And, you know, putting it on the spreadsheet like this and be able to show everybody uh, what what is in, in front of them and also with the personal property taxes. You're welcome. Thank you for that. I want to thank your town manager for a very thorough explanation of the whole process that has been taking place here. So I just want to thank, thank you for that. Um, any other? Okay, Sheila, roll call. Councillor Hopkins. Against. Councillor Ludwig. Against. Councillor Mangini. For. Councillor Nelson. For. Councillor Pisner. For. Councillor Santanella. For. Councillor Ungeyer. For. Deputy Mayor Sakala. For. Uh, Mayor Crisati. For. Uh, Councilor Despard. Against. Councilor Finger. 100% against. That's seven in favor, four against, and no abstentions. <clears throat> Item H, resolution to authorize a tax stabilization agreement with Enfield Solar One. It be it resolved that the Enfield Town Council is authorized to do so under the Connecticut General Statute 32-71A does hereby authorize the town manager to enter into a tax stabilization agreement with Enfield Solar One LLC subject to final review and approval by the Enfield Town Attorney. So uh, Councilor second. Mangini and a second by Councilor <laughs> Nelson. Um, this is the same tax uh, stabilization formula that was used a, fear, a few years ago and was duplicated for this agreement to be consistent. Uh, Finance Director John Wilcox here is here for any discussions uh, to answer any questions that we might have. And so I will open it up. Does anybody have any questions for John in regard to the same tax stabilization formula? <coughs> Councilor Ludwig. Thank you, John. Thank you for coming. Remind me, I thought we did a so one percentage over 10, 10. I didn't think we did any. Dis if I remember what we did on for the one on Broadbrook Road, I almost put 100 percent positive. We just did the same percentage over a number of years. So we didn't do a sliding scale. And I, what I'm seeing in my package shows a sliding scale, which I didn't think we agreed to. OK, um, I'm, I'm remembering the last meeting we had with them, which was a very, you know, very, very. Uh, animated meeting and I thought it was one set percentage over a number of years. What we did with Nutmeg Solar um, is the difference between this agreement and the um, and the uh, Wood Stanley agreements is this one we're trying to project out future the total tax that we're going to collect right. and then bill that in even installments over the period of time of the agreement. Okay, so when I went through the, I looked at the um, conditions, the economic conditions that were in, in place at the time of the Nutmeg Solar Agreement, um, and then we said, okay, the, the, we're specified on what 
um, the depreciation schedule right. and all that stuff is. So if you look at that, at the schedule, you'll see you see a fixed amount, the same amount of um, personal property value. This is only on the personal property. Right. Okay. And there's a set depreciation scale that's mandated by the state. So in the first year, if you have a uh, property that's that's valued at a million dollars, you can only you can only uh, the amount that they charge that you can tax is 950,000 and then you apply the the 70 percent um, rate so it's 70 percent of 95 percent year two it declines down to 90 percent year three is 80 then 70 then 60 and until it goes down to 30 percent so what I did was said okay I'm going to calculate moving forward what those increases are get the total over 20 years and divide by 20 yeah. and that's the amount and that's the same um, philosophy that I used in this Perfect. calculation here um, now for the mill rate that's the that's the big no, I'm coming up with what a mill rate is going to be is going to is pretty hard all right. So where I think that, you know, I've, I've tried to be conservative to, to you know, to uh, um, not place any burden on the town and not actually give them an abatement or anything like that. I to get to this mill rate, you know, the, the current mill rate right now is twenty seven point eight nine mills. OK, so to get to this mill rate, I applied a five percent increase. For the October 2020, I think which one I'm in here, 2022 grand list, a 5% increase for the mill rate that's based on the 2023 grand list, and then a 5% increase on the 24 right. grand list, 5% on the 25. So there's almost over a 20% increase on based on our, our current mill rate. And then I applied, I believe it was 3%, uh, and then Two percent thereafter. Okay, so I think what we're—I mean, right now the inflation rate is around eight percent. You know, I don't think our mill rate's going to go up that much, but right. All right. So over a number of years, we're going to. Then we, we still have, to, like you said before, we're still going to have to pay. I, I forget. That's right. How we did depreciation. You're right. My apologies. I forgot how we did it. You're exactly right. So I appreciate the explanation. You. Two, so two two final questions, real quick. So. Is it is it a residential zone property? Is this mill rate based on what's the zoning of it? Is it industrial land? Is it residential? Um, currently, you know? there was a driving range on right. that, or uh, I think that. It's so is just this a residential down. mill rate or do, or the industrial rate? There's not a separate mill rate for residential, or I should industrial. say the assessed value of the land. I said, sorry. Right. Well, this is based on the because this is business personal property only. Okay. <clears throat> okay. Right. So th this agreement applies only to the business personal property, um, and that's whatever the value. The, right. It's based on the cost of the property that that we that they buy. Got it. Um, the the we will still assess the resident the. Real estate portion will still be assessed and will be billed to the owner of the property because this company is actually leasing the comp the, the property. Again, thank you for the explanation. Uh, again, I, it, this is our third solar farm. I was against this. We got our letter in too late to the siting council. Uh, you know, I, we have enough solar farms. I don't care what credits we're getting from it. Um, for me, I didn't like the way the site again. Then when this stuff goes through the siting council, not your issue, John. But again, it takes away local local control zoning, and I find it ironic that they go through the state, then they come to the town looking for these agreements, which is kind of ironic. However, thank you, uh, but I'm against this. Thank you, John. Thank you, John, for that explanation. I think well, that uh, was very thorough in, in regard to that, and. Uh, and I, I know that there's been other solar farms that there no, no problems with uh, agreeing to this. Mm -hmm. um, so any other comments? Uh, we'll go to Councillor Okay, uh, Councillor Nelson and then Councillor Hopkins. Okay, so I have a little different approach on this. It's uh, along with what Councilman Ludwig said, when the state of Connecticut takes the power away from a municipality, they're doing it for a reason because they know people don't want this. 
And after sitting on planning and zoning and seeing the remaining land Enfield has to develop and seeing how this town's regulations at the time allow a Wynn Stanley to be built where it was built, which I don't agree with, but I had no choice but to allow it. We're taking pristine land now and we're stacking it full of solar panels. We got Broadbrook Road, we got Powder Hollow, both were residential areas. Now we have this area, which is a business industrial area. Raffia Road just hit the sitting council. So it's coming behind the Raffia stores. That's why he cleaned up all the firewood. So that's gonna be our next solar farm. Are we just gonna stack our remaining land with these solar farms and then thank them by giving them an agreement for doing it? I don't wanna make Enfield open for solar farms, either keep it farmland, I can't eat a solar panel. And I hate to say it, I just got my electric bill and you know what, all this new solar that's been crazy for the last 10 years, my bill's still way through the roof and it went up huge. So I don't see a difference, solar, no solar. I don't support this because we don't have the land in Enfield to do it. Make them look like the cell tire towers, like they look like a tree, put them up in the woods so we can't see them, and then I'd have a different opinion. Councilor Hopkins. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I couldn't disagree more. I think solar farms uh, are pretty low, I mean, low taxing uh, issue on the surrounding residents. Ideally, yeah, I would like, that's the point I will agree, agree with you on, I would like if this land were farmed, but the cost of farming in Connecticut per capita is so much higher than many other places, I think it's hard to compete. Maybe the state of Connecticut could incentivize that. I hope they do, but for infield, it's it's a good deal. You know, these solar farms don't create hundreds of trucks going up, our, and up and down our, our town roads that we have to repair. We just collect the tax revenue on these solar farms, and they are temporary. I think that's another part that gets me, so that's my two cents. Uh, Councilor Despard. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Yeah, I just wanted to add, I, I support this as well. I think this is a good deal for Enfield. And I think all those people that just left, I think if you asked them if they would rather a solar farm next to their house, I think, I think they would take it in a heartbeat. Okay, thank you. Go, going along the li lines of the siding council, uh, Mr. Nelson, Councilor Nelson referenced that Raffia Road. Uh, we we did uh, receive notification uh, today in regard to another petition coming through. So um, just keep keeping a heads up. Um, you know, I, I am in favor of of this particular uh, project. And uh, so, is there any other? Comments moving forward, yeah. So just, you mentioned that the, I don't want to mix conversations here, but if they're, depending on what the application is, if we're going to be an intervener, we need to do it early on. So if there's going to be public hearings to get the siting council to come to Enfield like they did for, for, for we got to do it now. So that's a separate conversation. And I don't want to send a letter that's too late. No, th this is something that, that will be, be brought up is something that just came through late today, okay? Michael? Yep. Okay, yep. very good. Uh, <laughs> town manager? Just a point of clarification, for the North Road uh, intervener letter, we were too late to get them to come here to have a hearing, but our letter stating our opposition was on time and considered by the by the commission. Correct. And the letter that came in today and was uh, stamped in by the town clerk for the Raffia Road one has already been referred to the Planning and Land Use Office for review. Okay, great, thank you. All right, roll call. Councilor Hopkins. Four. Councilor Ludwig. Against. Councilor Mangini. Four. Councilor Nelson. Against. Councilor Pisner. Against. Councilor Santanella. Four. Councilor Ungeyer. Against. Uh, Deputy Mayor Sakala. Four. Mayor Crisati. Four. Councilor Despard. Four. And Councilor Finger. Against. That's, um, excuse me, sorry, six in favor, five against, no abstentions. Okay, thank you. Is it six, five? Okay. You're welcome. All right. Thank John. Thank you very much, and thank you for your efforts tonight. Greatly appreciate it. Item I, resolution to settle property tax assessment appeals for two, 240 Brainerd Road and 466 Enfield Street. <clears throat> Resolve that the 
Enfield Town Council does hereby authorize the town attorney James N. Talberg or his designee to settle the outstanding tax assessment appeal in the following action. K Brothers LLC versus the town of Enfield. Docket number HHB CV 22 6074085S. The fair market value of 240 Brainerd Road to be $221,400 and the fair market value of 466 Enfield Street to be $120,510. Date prepared November 28, 2022, prepared by the Office of, of the Town Attorney. So moved. Uh, Deputy Mayor Scala and a second by uh, Councillor Mangini. All right. Uh, I'm going to ask the town manager to just give us a quick update. This was something that was tabled. Yes. So um, as you can tell by the data preparation, what happened in our office is uh, we have a safety net system so that things don't get lost off of the agenda. And because no action was taken on these, uh, we moved them forward. Uh, I know that there were mixed feelings about some of the valuations attached to both, uh, but once the agenda was published in the interest of transparency, we just kept them on. You are free to actually make a motion to remove them, which would you would never see them again, or you can just take them individually and vote them up and down for disposition, whatever your pleasure is. Okay. Um, I'd like to vote. Well, we're we're going to vote on them tonight. Okay. Okay, any discussion? Councillor Nelson. Okay, I, I'm gonna hit both of them at the same time so I don't have to uh, talk again. Um, <laughs> on 240 Brainerd Road and 466 Enfield Street, I don't think there's a resident in this town that believes there is an up and working business on a standalone property, meaning a house or a business with the property that's worth less than $120,000. That's absurd. That assessment is so far off. And the BAA, the Board of Assessment Appeals, and the town assessor actually agree. That's a, that's a great thing. We've been trying to get them to do that for a long time. They agree. 240 Brainerd Road, Sam's Mart, and the plaza. I sold the subway plaza next to the Institute 10 years ago for almost $400,000. Double the price 10 years ago. Neither one of these numbers are even close to what they should be valued at. And I truly feel we can def defend them 100% in court. Now, I understand legal counsel says, you know what, it's cheaper just to settle it. But like these people just said, if we did that with everything, what's the point? Why do it? You know, give Adam Wood Stanley his 50% because he's going to sue us and it's not worth fighting. Now, on item J, the value on that one, I believe, is much higher, like in the 600000 range is what I thought it was. 550. 550. Now, that one there is a lot harder to justify. Are the numbers close? Yes. Do I think we'd have a hard time winning that in court? That'd be close. So I'd be willing to support J, but I will not support I. Okay, thank you. Councillor Hopkins. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, just, br just briefly on both of these, um, uh, my concern with this kind of thing is uh, businesses submitting abatement requests just because they know they're going to get something. Um, I know this has been talked about a lot. I'm glad we took some time to discuss it because it, it sounds like, uh, well, let me just say this. I think the case law is pretty strong for us. It's hard to overrule an assessor's evaluation. I'm not sure whether or not it's good or not, uh, but I think that their case would be weak, except for the fact that it sounds like we would be going into a courtroom with a judge who does like to give um, people uh, money off just for playing. So that's not going to be cost effective for us. And for this reason, I will vote for this, but I am kind of concerned. I don't want to be giving businesses that come through something just because they know uh, that if they apply, they'll get something. And I, I, I assume the town manager's office is, is concerned about that. So thank you. Okay, thank you. Is there any other discussion? Roll call. Um, Councilor Hopkins? Four. Councilor Ludwig? Against. Councilor Mangine? Four. Uh, Councilor Nelson? Against. Councilor Pisner? Against. Councilor Santanella? Four. Councilor Ungeyer? Against. Uh, Deputy Mayor Sakala. Four. 
Mayor Crisotti? Four. Councilor Despard? Four. And Councilor Finger? Against. That's six in favor, five against, no abstentions. Item J, discussion resolution, the resolution to settle property tax assessment appeal for 301 Hazard Ave. Resolve that the Enfield Town Council does hereby authorize the town attorney, James N. Talberg or his designee to settle the outstanding tax assessment appeal in the following action. Triano Realty Corporation versus the town of Enfield, docket number HHBC V2260740 S the fair market value of the property known as 301 Hazard Ave to be $550,440. So Councilor Mangini and a second by Councilor Nelson. Uh, any discussion on this? I sense none. Roll call. Councilor Hopkins? Four. Councilor Ludwig? Against. Councilor Mangini? Four. Councilor Nelson? Four. Councilor Pisner? Against. Councilor Santanella? Four. Councilor Ungeyer? Against. Deputy Mayor Sakala? Four. Mayor Crisotti? Four. Councilor Despard? Four. And Councilor Finger? Against. That's seven in favor, four against, no abstentions. Item K, resolution to transfer funds from the Office of Early Childhood School Readiness Grant 26,880. Be it resolved that in accordance with Chapter 6, Section 8F of the Town Charter, the following transfer is hereby made from the School Readiness Grant, uh, the revenue of $26,880 to the School Readiness Grant for non-certified salaries, $16,500, Social Security, $1,023, Medicare, $240, Professional Development, $4,000, other professional services, 2,000, instructional supplies, 2,400, and food, $717. Date prepared January 9th, 2023, prepared by Cindy Guerrero, Director of Social Services. So moved. Uh, Councillor Nelson and a second by Councillor Mangini. Um, any discussion on this? Um, Sheila, roll call. Councillor Hopkins. Four. Councilor Ludwig. Abstain. Councilor Mangini. Four. Councilor Nelson. Four. Councilor Pisner. Four. Councilor Santanella. Four. Councilor Ungeyer. Four. Deputy Mayor Sakala. Four. Mayor Corsati. Four. Councilor Despard. Four. Councilor Finger. Four. That's uh, 10 in favor, none against, and one abstention. Item L, discussing resolution and request to the Board of Education concerning the deposition of Nathan Hale School. Be it resolved that the Enfield Town Council requests a meeting between the Board of Education leadership and the Town Council leadership in order to discuss the reversion deposition of the Nathan Hale School and a request for a waiver from the State of Connecticut of the remaining balance. So Councilor Mangini and a second, Deputy Mayor Sakala. Uh, I'm going to refer this to uh, the Town Manager, uh, Ellen. So we do have some interest in Nathan Hale from a private entity. Uh, this would be the, th the third entity that has expressed interest uh, during my tenure. And uh, uh, the finance director, Mr. Wilcox, obviously has the amortization schedule uh, based on the renovations that were done and then the school closing within the payback schedule. There has been a reducing amount uh, over the last several years that is scheduled to end, I believe, in September of 2025. Uh, and it reduces by about $100,000 every year. So right now we still owe about $200,000, uh, actually $202,538 as of today. So in order to clean this issue up for either this interested party or whomever comes after that, uh, we started the conversation with our legislative delegation about how to obtain a waiver so that we do not have to pay the remaining uh, dollars if, in fact, we have a credible purchaser that comes in within the time frame between now and 2025. So our legislative delegation laid out for us uh, the process of what we should be doing. And actually, I just received an email from Representative Hall 
during the meeting with some additional details uh, between her, Senator Kissel, and Representative Arnone about how to go about this. This afternoon, uh, I spoke with the superintendent. He has already started the process on his side, and uh, he would like to have the conversation with leadership, but it appears that it may make more sense for them to make the ask than the town council. We will have that discussion and see how we can expedite this while the legislature is in session. Okay, th thank you very much. Uh, there's one comment that, that I do want, want to make. Um, so when we have the uh, superintendent give us the, the blessing from the, from the Board of Ed, uh, once again, just to remind everybody, there, there's no guarantee uh, that they will give us the waiver. Hopefully they, they will. But I just want to just put that out. Just because we're asking for it doesn't mean that they're going to give it to us. Councilor uh, uh, Ludwig. And just to be clear, when you have this meeting, there, is a re there was a board resolution on this, and you might want to ask the superintendent to go dig it up because it's out there and it was passed. I believe this was January of 17, I believe, if I remember my years correctly. So there's a resolution regarding Hale. The Board of Ed passed it, and I don't think the council ever acted, but I think there is a, a board resolution. So... When you guys meet, just a, a little heads up. There's some, there is some history out there. Okay, we'll uh, we'll, we'll we'll take a look at that. Um, okay, uh, roll roll. Uh, is, oh, Councilor, very quickly. I'm do we sorry. have a sense through the the uh, mayor to the town manager? Do we have a sense of how likely it is that this would be accepted? This waiver request. I really don't, but um, due to the state's current financial status, I would think that they would be more inclined to do it, especially if we tell them that Enfield is really looking to move this, this piece of property. Obviously, a reuse of a school is a high priority. We don't want to have empty, blighted buildings within our neighborhood, and we've had some significant quality of life issues in that Nathan Hill neighborhood with those neighbors, and I think that they would be very happy to see this have a new life. Thanks. Okay, thank you very much. Sheila, roll call. Uh, Councillor Hopkins? Four. <coughs> Sorry, Council four. Okay, thank you. I didn't hear you. Councillor Ludwig? Four. Councillor Mangini? Four. Councillor Nelson? Four. Councillor Pisner? Four. Councillor Santanella? Four. Councillor Ungeyer? Four. Deputy Mayor Sakala? Four. Mayor Crisati? Four. Councillor Despard? Four. Councillor Finger? Four. That's an 11 in favor, none against, no abstention. Okay, item 13, any other business to come before us tonight? Okay, public communications. Is there anybody wishing to come in front of the council? You will have three minutes. I thought you were homesick. Mm -hmm. I am sick. Well, you just took it off. So you can hear me. Thank you. So I obviously am, yes, not Zach Zanoni, 6 Howard Street, Enfield, Connecticut. Um, no, I'm not feeling that great, uh, but I did feel the need to come out. Um, and I didn't speak tonight for that reason, but I did feel the reason to come and speak um, after everything that I've witnessed. I've been in politics in town since I was 14 years old. I'm often the youngest person in the room. And one of the reasons that I'm a Democrat is because I always believe that the party that I'm in now, first and foremost, had the responsibility to listen to the people. And so what I saw tonight was really heartbreaking from my point. And I respect that Councilor Ungar, I know you mentioned there's about upholding promises and agreements. In February, I watched that meeting from 3,000 miles away, and there was many people on this council that said they would listen to the people and that they would guide their decision on listening to the people. That is not what happened tonight. And that is truly unfortunate. And I also want to say for the record, Eppendorf is not a local company. My mother works there. It's a multi-billion dollar, multinational company. But to sit here and, and watch so many residents speak out and you didn't even consider to table it for a discussion for people to speak, I think is just truly unfortunate. And I know me saying this is gonna piss off plenty of people, especially in my own party, but it has to be said because going forward down a path where we continually don't listen to residents when they are near unanimous in opposition to something, I mean, why are you sitting in those seats? Seriously, why are you sitting in those seats if you don't listen to the people that you were elected to represent? I didn't run for office, people don't want me to but you were elected 
six of you by default because of the way our charter operates, so you can never be held accountable for anything you do. But why, if you won't listen to people, you voted to help a business over voting for what the people wanted. And I also feel the need to mention, you know, Councillor Nelson, I obviously picked up what you said about my grandfather's plaza and the solar panels. There's no trucks. The property is vacant. It's full of dirt. There's going to be gravel placed. It's for the environment. It's green energy. And we're not asking for an abatement either. So, and I just texted him that about 20 minutes ago. I have no idea why we wouldn't encourage solar panels. There's very little negative effect on the community for that. And we're not asking for any handouts either. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else that would like to come in front of the council? We'll have three minutes. Yeah, well, I've been here for three and a half hours, so I'll be as quick as I can, but I'm vested now. Gary Young, Abbey Road, Enfield, Connecticut. My, sepic to my second topic relates to the August 8th meeting. I brought up the concern about speeding, disregard for the stop sign at Neelands Road and Abbey Road, and the overall pace of traffic during peak time, specifically on our southern section of Abbey Road, along with the safety concerns mentioned by many town residents on social media across the town, on many other residential streets and a few identified main intersections. Although many councilor members that evening had expressed similar concerns and it was stated that the issues would be addressed at the next safety meeting, as of today, January 9th, I unfortunately have yet to hear from anyone. I have also yet to see any additional police presence on our street during any mentioned times when the most significant concerns of commute times were noted from the previous meeting. After reviewing said meeting and responses, responses multiple times, I'd like to address a few statements specifically made by the town manager during that meeting that give me the sense that the concern was being dismissed. First quote, this is a traffic pandemic with people driving out more. Every town is complaining about speeding issues. Our town should be our concern and the council's as well. What we are doing about the issue in our town should be our focus at these meetings. If you follow the local news, you'll recognize other towns have been doing something about it. There have been local news segments in the last 90 days on Channel 3, 8, and 61. Towns are specifically focusing on this traffic concern, and they are doing things about it. They are using funds, and they're putting up solar speed signs in designated areas. Mr. Nelson, welcome to District 1. I'll be happy to start working with you. I have multiple examples of articles where local towns are doing something about the concerns. I won't cover them tonight because of the three minute window, but they're all highlighted in my notes. I need clarification on the statement, where do you want them and how do we assign them? I specifically stated where the concerns were during that meeting. Since my initial concern was raised, I have seen at least five different occasions I work from home where vehicles have passed another car in our specific stretch of Abbey Road, doing 65 miles an hour plus, and I have that on video. Since that meeting, at a minimum, at a minimum, four different occasions, two on Elm and two on Route 5, where people have driven through bus stops while a child drops off, a drop off occurs. This information was obtained from the local town social page. Mr. Nelson, you mentioned social media pretty quick to determine what parents in what areas of this town have those traffic concerns. It is not the entire town. There are highlighted areas. If you're looking for more areas of concern, it's easy to go back to that local forum, as I mentioned, and see the traffic complaints specific. I'm sure residents in that area appreciate something being done. Uh, there is a four-way stop being placed at that intersection of Abbey and Taft. That was one note uh, that the mayor had made, or the manager, excuse me, that's at the opposite end of Abbey Road, so it does not address the concern on my end. The traffic patterns are unacceptable throughout the entire town. They are specifically extremely unacceptable where I live. I welcome anyone along with that individual earlier about T, hang out during three specific times. Ms. Ungar, you know what I'm talking about. Neelands Road, they no longer stop at that sign. If they live in that area, they drive right through it. I've sat there for an entire day. 
it needs to be addressed. And the overall pace of the traffic just in general, especially in our area with no sidewalk, no regard for the residents. Ironically, today, the Enfield Police put up a post about how resident walkers can be safer. No mention, no addressing the traffic concerns that I brought up back on August 8th. And again, I have not yet heard from anyone. Happy to speak to anybody about it. Happy to bring the news in. They can hang out in my driveway during the morning commute, the noontime commute, and the evening commute. It needs to be addressed. Been there for 16 years, pay over $7,000 in taxes. All I'm seeing for that right now is a trash pickup once a week. I want police presence. And so did just about every other resident on that town, including the five families that are wrapped right around where I live with multiple children, just shy of probably eight or nine children. That's it. Thank you for letting okay. me go over. Yep. You're welcome. Thank you very much. Is there anybody else? Yeah, Mr. Mayor. Oh, sorry. I'm just wondering if I could, uh, if I could through, through the mayor to the town manager, if we could add that possibly to the public safety. Uh, I so, um, about it, but I'm waiting to respond. Well, for let's, let, yeah, let's go ahead. Okay. Go ahead. This is no, go ahead. My turn. Go ahead. We, we're, we're doing the counselor communications and then Walter J. Cruzel, public and then counselor Matt. After go ahead, Walter J. Cruzel, 21 Charlie Road. Thank you for passing that abatement. I think it is important because it keeps our mill rate at under 30. It could be, without business, we could be at 70 mill rate. I mean, it's it was done in the past for Hallmark. It was done in the past for Yagenberg. It was done, in, I can, could go on and on and on. That's the nature of business. Mr. Winstanley is also people. So you have to listen to, uh, you want to listen to people? You got to listen to people too. He is a person too. And what he does, in developing buildings and, and bringing business to town helps all of us. Just like I could be, I could be listed as a developer for Peerless Way, taking a piece of property that I paid eight hundred dollars in property tax, and now pays probably around eighty thousand dollars a year in property tax, and that's not including personal property and all that. So that's the way it's done. That's what. And it keeps our taxes down. It pays for everything. It pays for electricity. It pays for for uh, contract increases. It it pays for all this stuff. And without it, these people would be would be would be paying double, if not triple, what they're paying now. So, thank you again, and happy New Year again. Okay, thank you. Oh, and welcome, Mr. Councilor Finger, to the right side. Thank you, Mr. Krizel. Uh Is there anybody else that would uh, like to come before the council? Okay, it's 1030. This is Charlotte Riley, 55 John Dodd Drive. I know y'all want to go home because I've sat up before and I definitely want to go home too. Um, but I just wanted to Hopefully, and on a good note, um, I wanted to say thanks for letting the nonprofits get in on the ARPA funding. Um, if you don't know, I'm president of First Readers, and we were on that list um, because we could not have our sole fundraiser for the last two years, and uh, we were awarded some money this evening, and it's going to help us give all that money right back to all the kids. So I just wanted to thank you guys for approving them, and I hope that you do spend more of that ARPA money on the businesses that stayed open because they really do deserve it. So thanks. Okay, thank you very much. Is there anybody else that would like to come in front of the council? Okay, public communications are declared over. Uh, councilor communications? Yeah. Councilor Ungar, so you don't take my right shoulder off. Thank you. Uh, and thank you to Mr. Young for hanging out with us so late. Um, I do. I did want to let you know that we did. We were given a handout all with traffic calming situations that we could look at and try to decide. We did discuss, you know, additional stop signs, uh, speed bumps, road, the narrowing of the road. So we did take a look at a lot of different 
options that we have. So don't think we weren't talking about or didn't think about it. And we met not that long ago. So we will be talking about it again. And Councillor Despard, would you like to add anything to that? Yeah, I was just uh, wondering if maybe we need to relook just at those specific intersections that uh, Mr. Young is talking about. I don't know if, um, town manager, do you have something? Okay, <laughs> sure. Uh, so we all know our police situation with our manpower. Uh, last week we swore in officer 99 and 100. And for a brief shining two weeks during the month of January, we will be fully staffed. Fully staffed on paper, which doesn't take into account workers' comp injuries, vacations, leaves, etc. And I say that not to make an excuse for the police department, but to understand the breadth of resources that are available. We have fully staffed uh, zones that go out every day with supervisors, both in and out of the station. We have a very high call volume. So if there is a traffic issue versus a cardiac issue, I think we all know what that uh, priority is within dispatch and with our, our cars. However, to make a characterization that nothing's being done or nobody's listening or there's not been immediate action is, is just wrong. Um, since the August 8th meeting, I have my traffic folder up. We, through you, all of you, through me, we have made eight referrals to the traffic division for traffic studies. There are 60 locations on Sergeant Meyer's list that are monitored uh, based on zone. Um, I have all 60 of them. They are ready to be presented to the Public Safety Committee. But I will tell you, I just saw it, that number 25, Abbey Road for speed, and number 26 is Abbey times Neyland speed and stop signs. So they are out there in terms of on the list because they were referred, along with 58 other locations that range from Raffia Post Office during JFK dismissal, something at Varno Lane that was referred at our um, September 20th council meeting, Catherine at Field, Booth, Taylor Road between Hale and <laughs> Sheridan, Route 190 between 191 and 192. These are the, all the locations, all 60 of them, that will be reviewed on Wednesday. Uh, they are constantly changing and updated. So we are being responsive within the, um, the resources that we have. Uh, I do know that Chief Fox is contemplating uh, pulling out a regular officer and putting them in traffic in order to expand the amount of responses that they can make. But again, it's a small division that has many demands put on it, just like the department does. So for 100 sworn officers, you know, there's a lot that's going on. And I think just we just need to be aware of that. We are very cognizant of the quality of life issues with speeding, distracted driving, texting, impaired driving, general discourteous behavior. And I stand by all of my comments. This is a situation that is all across the state. Uh, I do care about what happens in Enfield. And last meeting, you had a gentleman come and suggest that we do more with pedestrian and bike safety. And we're doing that. That too was referred to public safety. So. I take slight umbrage with the you're doing nothing. A lot of what happens in government, as you well know, is at the staff level and at the committee level. And we have opportunities like tonight to talk about what we're doing. Nothing happens overnight. And as you can tell, and, and I will tell you for a community this size, no matter the geographic basis, to have 60 assigned locations that are given out at dispatch, I mean, at roll call every day and monitored through dispatch, that's a lot. So you are being responsive. Does it mean that there's a police officer sitting at every one of these 60 locations? It does not. But it does mean that when they're in these zones, and if they do have a moment, maybe they are doing a report while they sit at Weymouth, at Deerfield Circle, or someplace else. They at least have it, they know about it, and they're tracking it. So we will continue this conversation at Public Safety. Okay, th thank you very much. Is there any other comments? Councilor oh, Mangini. Thank you. I just want to uh, quickly um, address Charlotte um, for the first readers. Thank you for keeping the committee going. It's very important. And I think now would be a good time for a public service announcement that we've got trivia coming up February 25th. And I would encourage everyone to either buy a single ticket or a table. Our DAR. A chapter is going to buy a table, and we're looking forward to having a dynamic time 
and it's unfortunate you did have to go through the COVID issue, but you know, let's get through it and let's get some money back in there for the kids. Thank you. Okay. Councillor Nelson. Don't look at me like that. <laughs> <laughs> A couple of things. Um, I, again, times must have changed because last time I was here, we would tell the town manager to tell the police department to put a police officer there at these times and it would happen. It would take four or five days, 100 tickets, and it took care of the problem. Um, it seems like going through certain committees just isn't getting things done fast enough. Um, so we may want to relook at that. Putting a stop sign up at the intersection of Abbey and Taft Road is a total waste of money because Abbey Road is so bad at that end. If you go over 20 miles an hour, you're going to jar your teeth out of your mouth. And I asked about that several meetings ago to know where that is on the roads list. That's how bad the road is. It's almost as bad as prior. Um, I, I just hate to be the one who would have to sit here. God forbid a child gets hit or even killed at at that area he's talking about because it's a large neighborhood that all funnels and they try to whip through um, Wallop School Road and up there and it's not good. So maybe we could just throw an officer there, put some whatever we got to do to force it. Um, when we had a meeting with the chiefs the other day, he was proud because the Enfield Police Department, since this current chief has been there, is finally at 100% staff. He has 100 sworn officers. First time since he's been here. Bad news is it lasted five days. And he had one officer retiring, one officer quitting. We had a situation where we could never have a full police department. And this backs up the town, the town manager with what she's saying. So what we did is we created two non-existing positions. So we raised the headcount at the police department from 100 to 102. That would give the police department the ability to hire two officers, get them started in the academy, and by the time they get out, we're going to need them. And just to keep it rolling between the retirements and uh, family leave and all these other things, it can't hurt us. And he has a particular budget he was talking about where they could use the money from or they would take them. They use it for something else now. He could use the money for that, he said. I would really like that to get discussed, too, in public safety. But it's got to get discussed because we can't have, you know, these cars racing around. And it is the driving age of COVID. People just lost their marbles. I don't get it. And my last thing is, same thing, dial a ride. I'm getting complaints from the elderly. There's just not enough dial a ride staff. And I think we're down to three now. And I don't know if it's the three because somebody just quit and somebody's out sick or it's going to be it's three now and one's quitting and one's out sick or something. But um, they don't feel and I'm just relaying the message. They don't feel that maybe the person in charge of this is devoting the attention they should be. I understand trying to hire employees right now is next to impossible. So that is not my sentiment. I'm just relaying the message. Don't shoot the messenger. Councillor Nelson, I don't think we would do that. Uh, okay. we, we will, we, we will. Unless you go like 20 we, more minutes yeah, and then we might. No, that's no, the first page. I'm no, on to my second no, page now. So. Councillor Nelson, we will, we will definitely look into uh, the bus driver situation with dial ride and with Magic Carpet. You have to include our Enfield, full Enfield transportation system in regards. So we will... Uh, we will investigate that. Are you done now? Can we uh, make no, a I'm not. To no, adjourn? no, oh. no. I'm, I'm, I'm going to make you wait. I want to recognize uh, in, in the audience, and, and, and they've been here all night long. We, we have a couple of firefighters in the Thompsonville firefighters right, right over here, sitting in. Uh, and I don't know if you guys were 
called in to be uh, on the blaze on, uh, over at the Grays Club or not. And uh, I'm sure that you were there. And uh, thank you for your service. Keep up the good work. We're supporters of that fire department. And uh, nice job, fellas. All right, I am through now. Motion. We have a motion, Councillor Finger and second Councillor Mangini. All in favor? Unanimous. Good night, everyone, and Happy New Year.